Прийшли окупанти до нас в Україну, форма новенька, воєнні машини та трохи поплавився їх інвентар. Байрактар! Байрактар! Російські танкісти сховали з кущі, щоб лавтим посьорбати до паніщі, та трохи у чах перегрівся на бар. Байрактар! Великая страна. Кто воды всякое устроение, разные потужные ракеты, машины залезни у нас на все доводы е комментар. Байрактар. Байрактар. Вони захопити хотіли на зразу, а ми зачаїли на орків образу з російських бандитів. Робить примар. Байрактар. Байрактар. Російська поліція справи заводить, там пих цю рашистів ніяк не знаходить, хто винен, що в нашому полі глухар. Байрактар. Байрактар. Веде пропаганду кремлівський урод, слова пропаганди ковтає народ, тепер нове слово знає цар. Байрактар. Байрактар. Oh. 
Hello, everyone. I'm the Enforcer, and I'm accompanied by Enforcer Matt. Ian, good evening, folks. It's Enforcer Matt once again, and welcome back to day 786 of the news. And we're getting some big news out of Ukraine today, and not just the Middle East. And it feels like we were just here a moment ago. It's good to see you all once again. And of course, long time no see. It is time for us to get into the past 24 hours of the news of the war in Ukraine. There's been a decent amount of news, but I will have to say this in advance. This news segment is a little bit shorter tonight than normal uh, because while there has been big news, there hasn't been a lot of news today. Just some really big bulletin points. Uh, but beyond that, not really a lot extra to add on. Um, so we're going to be making sure to get through this news. But nevertheless, I got to thank everyone so much for sticking with us while we've been also covering the major breaking news of the Middle East as well because there's been a lot on our plate lately. Like y'all can tell, we've run two streams today, one right before this and this one. And I've only had about 10 minutes to get a coffee and drink in between with no breaks. So let's give it up for sweatshop hours and let's get right into that news as we were able to get the breaking news that a Russian bomber worth $200 million was shot down over the region of Stavropol Krai overnight as Ukrainian air defenses got their longest range confirmed kill as of today. This kill was a 300 kilometer away kill deep inside of the Russian Don and we got to see this all happen right here. Oh, uh, for some reason, that was that was very weird. But let me take you all to Twitter really quickly, and I'll show you all what we have. This is the TU-22M3 that was hit last night and shot down. Mm. That thing's sizzling. And we got to see the actual remains of the aircraft on the ground as well. We were also able to get a... Uh, a, a little bit of an update. Uh, apparently, both of the pilots were able to eject, and they're in moderate condition. Um, we have heard rumors that one of the pilots may have actually died. We don't know that for certain, um, but one of them is still alive. That is for certain. We know that one of them is alive out there somewhere in the world, uh, still doing their Russian pilot things. Uh, but beyond that, the Ukrainians claimed that they shot this aircraft down, and we were also able to see some additional uh, pictures showing the shoot down. We got to see those just a second ago, and we also saw the crash site as well today here in this clip we got to see the continued smoldering remains of the tu uh 22 m3 as it's sitting on the ground of course pretty much pancaking onto it and on fire now what is interesting about that is that uh when we were reporting on this a little bit last night near to the end of our uh breaking news middle eastern war stream we were talking about this possibly being a russian friendly fire incident the ukrainians actually published footage today that supposedly is from the service to air missile system that ended up shooting down the tu-22 m3 here is the footage that supposedly shows them firing the missile that would end up taking down the aircraft <laughs> And that's the end of the clip. Uh, but nevertheless, showing us a little bit of what's inside of the control room of the uh, surface to air missile system that supposedly shot down the Tu-22 M3. Overall, this is a massive success for Ukraine, if true. This means that the Ukrainians have been able to shoot down a strategic bomber 300 kilometers behind the lines, 300 kilometers inside of Russia, as a matter of fact, which would make this the longest range service to air uh, missile shoot down in world history at this point, from what we know. This is massive news and major because this means that the Ukrainians may have been able to upgrade a service to air missile system or modify it uh, where Russian strategic bombers will no longer be able to fly into the southeastern area of the Sea of Azov and attempt to fire missiles inside of Ukraine. And this will most likely give the Ukrainians a massive upper hand or a huge advantage going on into the conflict for the remainder of this war. Meanwhile, in the area of Bryansk, we were also able to see that a major electrical substation got hit and apparently knocked out as well, with footage coming out of the large fire that happened after the drone strike occurred. Ready. Looks like Russia's getting a piece of their own medicine now after they've been hitting uh, Ukrainian infrastructure here recently. Man, the the Russians are sitting there looking at that substation and they're going, well, it is a little bit of a sub-pair station. <laughs> oh, but anyways, it's hard to be at. 
Man, I'm telling you, man, that ship uh, ship uh, bleed, you know, really ship yeah. But beyond that, very nice to see that they were able to knock out an electrical substation in Bryansk, as that will most likely affect the local railroads and make it far more difficult for military logistics in that region to be conducted. At the exact same time, we also heard a statement from NATO General Secretary Stoltenberg that it's uh, very possible that more air defense systems will be delivered to Ukraine in the future. And here's the uh, here's the statement from Stoltenberg. Have agreed to step up and provide further military support, including more air defense. NATO has mapped out existing capabilities across the alliance, and there are uh, systems that can be made available to Ukraine. This is a very interesting statement because while it's only saying air defense systems, we do understand that an additional statement by Schultz sounds as though there is the possibility of a large amount of Patriot air defense systems, the, one that's, the ones that the Ukrainians desperately need, making their way into Ukraine and helping to defend the skies over the country. This is massively important as air defense is really going to be the winning factor of this war now that it's largely in the end game for the most part. We're in the later phase of the war at this point, it's very clear. Uh, the war will come to an end most likely because strategic infrastructure in one country is going to be destroyed quicker and have far larger of an impact than on the other. And the way to mitigate those kinds of damages and that effect is to have as much air defense as one can possibly have. That is why we believe that the Ukrainians are very desperately demanding and begging the West to provide them with air defense systems such as the Patriot so that way they can defend their skies completely while the Russians, once again, like we have been seeing uh, uh, recently have absolutely no real means or ability to defend their skies or their airspace. This How many is, more Patriot batteries would Ukraine need since they already have, I think, was it like a couple of them? How many more do they need to actually like uh, like cover the entire sky of Ukraine and defend it? Uh, on top of the one that Germany just uh, announced yesterday, they would need an additional six Patriot systems to be able to defend the skies of Ukraine completely from the front lines all the way to Lviv. And from what we understand, Schultz said that six Patriot systems may be released from European countries and into Ukraine here in the very near future. And one second, let me turn on my fan a little bit more because I'm getting a massive headache again. Um, but beyond that, um, it, it sounds as though they will be able to get all the air defense systems they need, which is around six of them approximately. Uh, so that is incredibly good news. Uh, we've also been able to get some additional news that apparently the Ukraine aid bill, or really the aid bill, if you want to call it that, as support for Israel and Ukraine is going to be given across the board. It is apparently going to be making its way through the House of Representatives either today or tomorrow, if I'm correct, Matthew. Yeah, it's supposed to be tomorrow evening, I believe it is. They'll be voting on that. That's the expectation, at least. Uh, and we'll see then exactly how many people are going to flip over to the side of Ukraine support. And I'm having some good hope that it'll probably be a decent number. And I'm holding out hope it's going to get passed. And hopefully so, because that will be absolutely incredible to see uh, that that aid bill gets passed because billions of dollars of support both for Ukraine and Israel will be moved forward, which will help the fight against the Russian sphere around the entirety of the world. Of course, the Iranians being a sub-sphere within that sphere, uh, but nevertheless, absolutely incredible to hear that that will finally be coming up to a vote and hopefully be having a massive impact and also Huge shout out to Walter hey. Lakota for throwing in a massive amount of support. Uh, and we will be making sure to uh, get to that here in a second. But thank you so much once again for that incredible support. But moving on. The LSA Bosian just threw the anchor over the side. I'm telling you what. Mm -hmm. Man, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, great to see. And thank you so much, Walter E. Lakota, for the support. Uh, but moving on from that news from the West, and hopefully we'll get to see that that does get passed through the House, as we understand that it will mostly be rubber stamped by the Senate and the President uh, afterwards, and then the support will make its way over to Ukraine, which is what we're hoping will happen, because it will continue to support Western interests and also keep the Russians at bay, not allowing them to expand farther into Europe. But moving on from that and down into the area of Ukraine, we were also able to see the air defense report of the Ukrainians overnight, which looked incredibly good. What a whopper. All right, so to break it down, it appears that one TU-22M3 strategic bomber was shot down. That's that's fairly new. Uh, we also got to see that 14 Shahed 136s were shot down as well, along with two KH-101s, uh, 11 to 12 KH-59s or 69s. Uh, they were also able to shoot down um, none of the Iskanders that were launched. Both of them made it through. Uh, they also shot down two KH-22s as well. So overall, it was a really good night. Now, out of everything that was fired into Ukraine, only, th only let's see, actually, let me make sure to count that correctly. Um, 
four, nine, seven, seven, uh, air, seven air targets made it to their targets aside of Ukraine, uh, while the remainder were shot down, showing that there is a fairly good interception rate, and once again showing that the Ukrainians are on the ball, or on their A game for the most part, and hopefully so, because they've been doing an incredibly good job with the air defense lately, although they've been starting to uh, have issues with ammunition shortages uh, here over the past few weeks, according to reports from the Ukrainian government, directly from President Volodymyr Zelensky. Uh, but with that, I hope that does uh, address the air defense report as best as we can. And it's now time for us to move on into our location unknowns. We were able to see a Ukrainian Su-25 in action today Wake in this in. short little clip where we got to hear, Wake up in! But here's the clip of it lifting up here in a second and firing off its rockets. And there they go. They're incredibly large rockets. Wildly large rockets. The best rockets. The finest rockets. But that's the end of that clip, but really nice to see that they were able to do their thing. Moving on from that, we also got to see that the Ukrainian army is learning how to use the RPG-75, a brand new Czech-delivered anti-tank weapon, 68 millimeters in size. Not that big, but sometimes it's not the size that counts, it's the pack of the punch that really counts. Uh, this picture was taken just this month, and it's really nice to see that the Czechs are continuing to provide some of their own weapons to help Ukraine with their common defense, which is absolutely incredible stuff. We're going to be moving on from that into our Russian Kashi report because the Kashi report has been a wapa boom, oh baby. Oh my goodness, man. They got zero bobcats today. What the hell is happening? Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean, Jack? What, what the Come hell on, do you Jack. mean? Well, listen, Jack. What, what, I, I, I want ice cream on my desk right now, and I want that son of a bitch Putin dead. <laughs> but anyways, beyond that, 870 Russian soldiers have been wounded and killed over the past 24 hours, along with 17 APCs destroyed, 53 supply trucks knocked out as well, 9 main battle tanks destroyed, 21 artillery systems knocked out, 27 drones shot down, 3 cruise missiles also destroyed as well, along with 2 anti-aircraft warfare systems, and absolutely no special equipment. So overall, it was a pretty good day, sadly no special equipment to speak of, but not that bad at all. Not bad, and it looks like the Ukrainians are once again holding their defense, uh, and as long as they hold their defenses until the later end of this year, as long as Ukraine gets the air defense and the munitions they need to keep those running, Ukraine should be able to wait out the Russians, and the Russians will most likely be on the verge of collapse by the end of this year due to the economic and military situation that is found within the Russian Federation at this point. But moving on from that, we do have to say that at the moment, there has been some statements uh, that uh, Ukraine, uh, well, the U.S. military says it will take less than a week to get uh, aid to Ukraine once the Ukraine bill passes. And a lot of people are having some thoughts. Some people are saying that Ukraine will begin winning quickly. Some people are saying that Ukraine will just stabilize the situation. Some people are saying that the aid will most likely not pass. Many people are having many different ideas and concepts of this and really are thinking deep on it. And Matthew, I want to know, what are people thinking deep on that? What are they thinking and what are you thinking? Okay, so on this poll, we said the U.S. military says it will take less than a week to get aid to Ukraine once the bill passes, and what are your thoughts? It's a pretty evenly split poll. It looks like 36% said Ukraine will stabilize the situation when they receive that aid in a week, 35% said Ukraine will begin winning quickly, and the 12% said, eh, aid will likely not pass. And for me, I think Ukraine will stabilize the situation temporarily, and then after maybe a couple of weeks of having that aid and that military equipment in their hands, then they'll start turning things around and really pushing the Russians back. That is my assumption, but more importantly, it's more important that the aid simply gets to Ukraine, basically in preparation for that expected Russian offensive, which Putin is trying to ramp up for while Ukraine is in a disadvantage, while they're out of ammunition. So it's really important to get aid there to avoid a crisis from happening during the summer mobilization in Russia, uh, and that's the main reason to me. But Enforcer, what say you? Uh, and I would have to say, uh, one second, um, let's see, I'm looking around here. So, second, looking around, I'm trying to see about that aid bill because someone just said it did pass and I was wanting to make sure their information wasn't outdated there. Uh, I don't believe nah. that it's passed the house uh, and we've been trying to pay attention to that the best we can, although I'm exhausted beyond belief at this point. I'm not even going to lie about that. But beyond that, um, I will have to say that Ukraine will most likely stabilize the situation and things will go well. We have to remember that the Ukrainians do not have to start winning. They just have to stabilize the situation. It is a defensive war after all. So as long as they're able to outlast the attacker, they will end up winning the conflict. 
So going off of that, I believe that as long as the Ukrainians stabilize those situations, they are in an incredibly good position. So that's what I think will most likely happen due to the passing of the aid bill. And so with that, I hope that does address that uh, the best I can, at least in my opinion. And Matthew, I understand that we also have some questions uh, in the chat. Matthew, what are those questions? All right, so first up, we have a $200 donation from Walter A. Lakota Jr. And he is hey! a channel legend, and huge shout out to you, Walter, for that massive support tonight. And he says, Aloha, the Enforcer, Enforcer Matt, and LSA from OG Ellison Boson. And it seems the Ukrainian-Russian war is probably the second phase of three phases of warfare. Um, and he says, new LSA chat rules, he says to the, to the privates. He says, rule one, no politics. Rule two, no religion or spamming. And rule three, respect enforcer and enforcer Matt. And Walt, Walt Taylor Cota is laying down the law. Walt Taylor you what. <laughs> Thank you very much, Walter, for that support. And enforcer, what say you? Hey, call Walt Taylor Cota the enforcer because he's laying down the law. You know what I mean? But beyond that, I got to say hello to the OG Ellison Boson. And thank you so much for the massive support and helping this channel to keep on running. I got to say... It means a great deal, and we are more than happy to know that you were here with us and really enjoying this channel and finding it worthwhile to support. And also, um, I would say that uh, I would believe, in my opinion, that's probably in the second phase, probably late second phase. But in my phase, in my mind, it's really in the third phase, the early third phase, uh, because it looks like it is starting to enter an end war kind of a scenario, because both sides are starting to make acts that look like they're trying to end the war quickly. And that may be because they're getting information on both ends that the war is starting to end. Uh, at least for them a little bit quicker. Like, for example, the Ukrainians are looking at the situation and going, if things do not turn around here soon, we're going to lose the war by this day. Um, we just will not be able to continue on beyond this point. We believe the Russians will be lasting a little bit longer than us at this point. So let's uh, bomb the refineries and knock them offline so that way the Russians will end up um, getting out of the war before we have to. Then the Russians look at that and they go, oh damn, um, the Ukrainians are about to force us out of the war before they end up forcing themselves out of the war. So let's start bombing their thermal power plants so that way maybe we can knock the Ukrainian power grid out and force them out of the war quicker. And now it's largely... In this war it's a largely tit for tat mass attacks or crippling attacks against the other you know kind of like taking a baseball bat to the shin or a baseball bat to the kneecaps uh and trying to get the other out before the other one um crumbles uh at least that's what i'm seeing at the moment and that's why i'm believing that's most likely in the third and last phase of a war is because both sides are getting fairly desperate about that uh it, it, from what i can tell and they're really starting to attack the most critical infrastructure that they can find um but it may be in the late second phase and this is the beginning of the third phase uh but i do have to say thank you so much for the unbelievable massive support walter Lakota. thank you so much for supporting this channel like that and helping us to keep this thing running i gotta say we are massively appreciative, and, and folks, uh, and, and you yourself, Walter Lakota, your support helps us to be able to do crazy things like running two streams today, running a five-hour marathon stream yesterday in two separate parts, uh, and everything else that we've been doing on this channel. Uh, I gotta say, um, I don't even know if we really should have run a Ukraine war stream tonight, because honestly, I'm feeling so tired. I'm probably about to blow through the frontline news, and this stream is probably only going to be an hour and a half long in reality. Uh because I'm just, I'm just exhausted. I really am. Um, but beyond that, I do have to thank you so much, Walter A. Lakota, for enjoying all of our efforts, uh, because that's why I'm so exhausted, is because we've been putting in massive efforts uh, into trying to get all of this news out to each and every one of y'all. And I got to thank you so much once again, Walter, for really uh, supporting this channel massively and helping us to make this thing um, possible, helping us to be able to get on air and do this as a job. Because if it wasn't for folks like you, Walter E. Lakota, who supported this channel, I wouldn't be able to get on this stream and run it right now or run one earlier. Uh, but beyond that, I got to thank you uh, so much once again for the support. Uh, and uh, with that, we are on to the next one. But thank you so much once again. And also, thank you for laying down the law. And he did lay down the law. Thank you very much, Walter. And our next one goes to Pell Ron, who puts in a $15 donation and does not leave a comment. But that is Pell's first ever Super Chat of the stream. And thank you very much, Pell, for that support. And Enforcer, what say you? And I got to thank you so much once again, Pell, for the massive support. I believe that is a Danish kroner. Let me, let me put that in and let me see. Uh, if it is, it is a Danish crown, actually, uh, or I would guess that's a crown in Danish. Uh, but beyond that, thank you so much for your first Super Chat ever, Pella Ron, for the support and helping this channel to keep on running. Because if it wasn't for folks like you, we wouldn't be able to be on air right now. And so with that, 
Thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And with that, we are on to the final question of this segment, and then we're going to be getting back into the Ukraine news and actually the frontline news. And this one goes to AMX10 Speedy Bang Bang, who puts in a 10 and says, um, the vote will occur just before Putin has breakfast. Oh my. And uh, have that in your cornflakes, Putin. Uh, that's a pretty good one. And I got to thank you so much for the support. And that is true. The vote will happen right when Putin is having breakfast, at least in his local time. And I would say that that is going to be great to see because you know something? You know something, folks? I'm actually going to blow you all away. If I have to make a prediction, are, are you good over there? Am I good? I was a sneeze. Oh, it sounded like you went, ouch. I was like, what the hell happened? I was like, did you just like poke yourself or something? I was like, I was like are you all right? Uh, but beyond that, I'd have to say uh, that from what I understand, what, what was that super chat again, Matthew? It said, uh, the vote will occur just before Putin has breakfast. Oh my, and have that in your cornflakes, Putin. Hey, have it in his cornflakes. You know what I mean? Um, but beyond that, yes, it will happen right when he is getting his breakfast. And I will put money on it. It will go through tomorrow. Uh, so with that, I hope that does address that well. Thank you so much once again for the support. And with that, we're now going to be getting on into the Ukraine frontline news. Uh, as we have seen Ukrainian defensive actions continuing in the Kremena Forest, and we've seen that the Russians have not been able to make any noticeable or really any frontline advances out of this area at all here is the clip when you see the ukrainian tank actually going up and blasting russian frontline positions and we see them continuing to hammer the russian position And that is correct, Ed Siegler. We actually saw that before we went on air. There were air raid sirens going off in Ukraine uh, in its northern and eastern regions, showing that there's most likely uh, localized drone attacks being conducted right now by the Russian Federation. Well, you see the Ukrainian tank now moving away from this Russian uh, outpost inside of the Kremena Forest and continuing to fire on Russian positions deeper inside of the woods. We now see the tank, I believe, continuing to fire, and it is, over the back of the engine bay. We now see the tank rolling away. And we now see the Russian dugout getting hit by some other form of an explosive, maybe a drone drop bomblet. And we now see the Russians making a run for it in a large group. They're getting the hell out of there! And you can see that it's just something nice to see. Now we see the Ukrainians coming up and storming the position. And starting to move in. Hmm. Mm, I'm so intellectual banned. <laughs> that's, that's, it's like goodbye, good night, and take care. Uh, but beyond that, that's the end of the clip, and nice to see the Ukrainians were doing some good work up in the Kremena Forest area. Meanwhile, further down the lines and in the area of Bakhmut, we also got to see that the Ukrainians were dropping hammers on the Russians in Bakhmut. Matthew, I didn't know that the Ukrainians were carpenters, but check out this hammer drop. For the boom. Oh my goodness. Call them the carpenters, because they're wiping these people out. They are carpenters indeed. They know how to destroy a building fast, I'm telling you what. Call them the demolishers because they be demolishing. I tell you what, man, whoever the, it was the Ukrainian pilot that dropped this bomb, you know what they ought to do? They ought to go back and open up a bar in Ukraine called the Rusty Hammer because they dropped that Rusty Hammer right on those Russians' heads. Kabooey. But beyond that, we're now moving on from that clip and on into our next one. We are also got to see some Ukrainian glide bombs hitting Russian positions near Ivanivsky while we just got an epileptic seizure at the beginning of this video. And we now see the glide bombs hitting the positions. Of course, these are Ukrainian glide bombs hitting the Russian positions. And once again, showing that Air Force activity, at least in this area, is starting to become heavily elevated. We now see the drone focusing on where other Russian positions are believed to be. 
and getting ready to target these and knock them out. And so with that, that's the end of the clip right there. Really nice to see. And of course, once again, showing us that the Russians are getting their ass to speed. Moving on from that, we got to see the Javelins and Stugnas of the 93rd Brigade in action near the area of Bakhmut. Check it out. Did they just say Igor? Igor! Igor! So uh, today we are um, reporting from the anti-tank unit positions on the Liman direction and we are working with the legendary 93rd Brigade. Uh, just these seconds the fight unfolds on the Horpa, which is just behind our back about two kilometers away. The Ukrainian BMP tried to attack the Russian positions and Russians started fighting back. Uh, it's quite intense judging even on the smoke that you can see. Just over a month ago, this anti-tank unit was deployed from Klishivka to the Leman direction, as Russians intensified their assaults here. The guys don't mind. Here it's like a safari for us, says Fox, the 24-year-old company commander. U.S. made javelins and the Ukrainian Stubn are the two pillars that help Ukrainian anti-tankers. The javelin is a fire and forget system, meaning once the target is locked, the operator doesn't have to guide the missile and can instantly take cover. Stugna is semi-automatic. The operator has to guide the missile via control panel. The control panel and the launcher are connected through a 50-meter wire, which allows operators to shoot without exposing themselves. Ghost operates the javelin. Bandit prefers the Stugna. But they use both weapons to work as a team. Аккумулятор, понятно, седая. Якщо, ну, спостерігаєте зі стулу? Ну, зараз, да. А вообще ж джевеліна. Так само це є одноразово. І ось ось. Well, that's weird. The battery doesn't really last that long in a javelin. Сама ця головка. All right. Нагрівається, ой, охлаждається, щоб лучше техніку бачити. Ці оба втори, вони більше як доповнюють один одного. На стогні самий прикол, ти сидиш блін джі, ти ведеш спостереження 24 на 7. Ти не прив'язаний до батареї дживеліна, ти ж одноразовий до охолоджувача і так далі. Є момент, нюанси, коли дживелін краще, наприклад, коли техніку видно якийсь там невеликий проміжок, інтервал часу. Потім вона там заїжджає в яр або там за посадку доїжджає. Джевеліну простіше він. Ігор. Oh, there it was again. They said Ігор. Це наша була взагалі? Ні. Григорич, може давай, ти, Артурчик Поляк, тому бліндажику поки. Ілі давай, ти застугну за пульт сядь. Я за <laughs> 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 <laughs>
саму установку, ну, пусковую установку. И там тепляк, и голова, и тепляк снимается, и все. Он и да. все, и закрыл назад. Да, ну, это если батарею менять. А так мы, пока батарея готовит, ему что металли 4-5 единиц уразить. Главное, чтобы не спалили. Да. Вот джойстик вот идет, и ракета, ну, не показываю, вот тут она в центре. Если хорошая выверочка, она должна в центре быть. И ты когда доводишь, и ты вот даже по ракете бачишь, куда она летит, сама ракета. Угу. И все. Бендит знает, что он говорит, и он говорит, что его слова о том, что он был очень аккуратным. Once in Bakhmut, he blasted troops of the Wagner PMC with his tuna while they were trying to raise their flag over the city. Или там минометом уже, если она вылазит, а в основном там птички, скиды, эпивишки, это все уже пехоту добывают. Если там вышло, там, не знаю, до пяти человек пехоты у них, это хорошо. А так они вон, там все валяются в посадках. Моя. Ну, это все техника. Вот это, а, я так и зрозумела, что не спали, да? Это все, 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 все ваши, плоды вашей работы, или оно уже... Ну, ну, это все... Ну, они имеют Lucky Strike сигареты там, они бы реально имели их. Они бы сказали, что они не русские, потому что если они имели их там, то что-то будет гореть. Сука, блядь, пиздики, да нахуй, блядь! По трассе едут их на хлобу. О, блядь, я крайне сказал, что это все, что я имею в виду? Они нас там тупо закидывают, людей просто уничтожают. Ну, ну, так людей сколько они теряют, чтобы ну, взять там кусочек земли, и этот кусочек земли не твой, а этот кусочек земли наш, который мы защищаем. Мы же не пришли там до них, да? Мы сидим на своей земле. Я лично украинец, я на своей земле, там, я и защищал Изюмский направок, там, за Барвенко, я сам за Барвенко. У меня там и танки подбиты, и, ну... Бехи и рис там, там багато тоже единиц нам быта. Когда вон она там рядышком, да, жінка, діти 20 километров дома живут, ну потом же отправу во Львов, потому что мы за. Ну, да, да, вот и все. А я, мы за свою, мы стоим тут а, только за своих, за свою семью, там детей, родителей. The 93rd Holodnyi Yar Brigade is known to be one of the most effective of the armed forces of Ukraine. Their determination is unwavering. More than two years of constant fighting seems to have little effect on them. Работа идет. Мы палим их, они палят нас. Вы на чем вам працюете? Я джавелинщик. Вы джавелинщик. Вы навчались здесь за кордоном? Нет. Я навчался в Бахмуте. Я приехал 18 лютого 23 -го года уже в сам Бахмут. И там я уже навчался на все. На все противотанковые орудия. Я попал в противотанковый взвод еще с учебки. Ну, я честно не буду брехать, я, как и шел воевать. Я хотел попасть в 93-й, не знаю, ворон меня сразу вдохновил. 93-й это бетон. 93-й они везде пытались переломать, но у них это не получается. Можно взять с Бахмут, до последнего мы держали. Клещиевка до последнего. Еще и взяли с помощью третьей штурмовой, еще и штурманули. Богданівку ми воно вдержали, передали суміжникам, там ще наші теж стоять, хлопці, воно вона держиться вже, я не знаю, місяця чотири. Тобто ми держимо до останнього. У нас немає такого, що ми можемо спокійно собі одійти і все. Тут десь казали, як матовці і вагнеровці, що тут теж засвітилися, коротше, тут не поняло. Вагнеровці знову? Та вагнеровці вже давно знову. Вони і під Бахмутом є, і тут почали заходити. Вагнер – це тупо м'ясо. А в них якось помінялась тактика? Ну, типу, після там? После Бахмута в них трохи, я вам скажу, поменялась тактика, даже да. заметно по тому, как они заходят. Mm -hmm. Если в Бахмуте они заходили, там идет 10 людей, и они идут все рядочками качинять, то тут а, Вагнер уже научился. О, блядь, о, блядь, это little shelling. Десятый за три. То ли полторы тонны, то ли 500 килограмм. Ну, блядь, все равно ощущение, блядь. The unpleasant noise that we just uh, heard was the 1500 kilograms 
uh, glide bomb, which made it very not hard for us. Uh, to be honest, for me, it was the first time, and it's really quite scary. Not gonna lie. Um, Вони, ну, це все, вони два штуки кинули. Один, походу, може, не просрала, тому що одна бахнула, а втора ні. Mm. А так вони залітають, там два-три кидають. От, сьогодні з утра три залітала, їх по три штуки кидала. І от цей четвертий залетів, він кинув два штуки. Піхота десь там в домах или десь, а может какая-то техника стоит, подъехала до дома, и они вот сразу, они не церемонятся, им легче вот на каба кинуть, или что-нибудь, чтобы там был какой-то там такой, блядь, разрыв, чтобы поуничтожать. Ну, везде было так, и Авдеевка, и Бахмут, они все там поразбивали, просто Бахмут они кидали там э, фабами, а тут уже кабами, так что делают пускают, а мы держимся. 93 аж никогда не отступаем. Стоим до крайнего случая. Мы же бойцы, блядь, 93 а что нам? And that scene in the clip, but showing the Fighting 93rd, talking about the Stugna and the Javelin, amazing anti-tank systems that allow them to blow away Russians with some relative ease in the area of southern Bakhmut. Moving on from that and down into the area of Divka, we didn't really get a lot of news today about what has been going on in this city. We were able to hear that apparently there were no advances that were conducted today, and there was also very little action. Uh, this one video that we have is actually somewhat older footage, but just published today, showing us a, a nighttime raid that was conducted by the 3rd Brigade with support from an M2 Bradley. A very interesting video, and here's the clip. I'm going to be muting this, but we can see uh, the night vision camera popping up and showing us what's going on in the area. Oh, look, some friendly uh, family guys out here. Look, the friendly neighborhood goons. <laughs> what are they going to be up to today? <laughs> Just out here, uh, you know, looking around, that's all. Just making sure the neighborhood's safe. Just looking through their little night vision monocle. We now see them showing a cool little intro right here. Certain Def said, moon's out, goon's out. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. When you see the, uh, when you see the Ukrainian uh, SBU goons moving forward, we're just going to call them the goons for the whole video because I think it's really fitting with the whole night vision thing going. But you see them climbing into the back of this M2 Bradley here. We now see the night vision. Oh, look, it is the SPU. It is really the goons, man. It's like the Ukrainian FBI. It's the freaking SPU. They are messing around, that's for sure. Dude, they had that goon look going, too, and everything, you know? And we can see the night vision monocle, once again, not really giving us a good view of what's going on. You see someone moving around their arm. We can now see the uh, monocle moving around a good bit. And it appears that they may be getting ready to dismount the vehicle. Although I can't really tell for certain at this point. It's actually focusing on someone's face. Now it appears that they're outside the vehicle. We see the Bradley moving around outside. And we see them filming it from here. We now see some bright flashes. We can't really tell if a firefight's going on or if that's a light.
And we can now see them continuing to engage in a firefight with the Russians. But from behind the M2 Bradley, we can see the side of the Bradley right there. And we see them continuing to conduct combat action against the Russians in the night vision monocle. It's a little bit like a silent film, kind of like Charlie Chaplin. Well, I can't tell what in the world's going on in this footage. Uh, a lot of bright flashes. We can see them looking around uh, some alleys, and we can also see them looking at some guys as they continue to climb into the Bradley. It looks like they may be leaving. Matthew, imagine being a plant the entire time you're on this channel, and then uh, uh, completely destroy, completely making worthwhile, worthless, the rapport and the reputation that you built up with everyone on this channel by making a worthless grandstand in the live chat. What a what a dumbass! <laughs> like how goofy can you be? He was one of them. There's actually a couple more in here right now. I hadn't gotten rid of them yet. Yeah, we're yeah. Oh, oh man, they think they think they're smart. But we actually have an eye on all of them. We know who they are. We know who we know where y'all are from. We know what you're doing here. Um, and, and the discord is going crazy, Matthew. You know, the one I'm talking about, they're all, he knows, no, he doesn't. And we really do. Um, but we can see them continuing to shine their lights off into the distance. And we see them continuing to do their thing. We can see the monocle looking up into the trees. We see him fire something and it blew up. And we see another object blowing up. And that's also something that people don't know um, about this channel as far as people who wish us poorly or, you know, are trying to do something to us. The thing is, is that we pretty much have a, a nice little unit of secret police that are always wandering around keeping an eye on people. And we know exactly who's involved and where they're involved. It's just that we don't ban them uh, unless if they're actively doing something in the live chat. We like to keep them around. Um, so that way we can keep an eye on them here and see what they're doing. Um, but with that, we can see them continuing to move into this house. See him looking around. We can see him looking around a corner. Let's see if there's still music. Still music. Oh my lord, dude. How in the world did they get 10 minutes of music? Would you play that lovely music? Why'd you stop playing that beautiful music? Ha <laughs> Mayonnaise is not an instrument. Is mayonnaise an <laughs> instrument? No, Patrick. No, hot dog man. You can't grift your way to success. Aw, oh, man. Can I get a brand new apartment and not pay rent? 
no, <laughs> no hot dog, man. You can't get in a new apartment and not pay rent. Aw, man, I heard this thing about squatting and adverse possession. Uh, hot dog, man, that's not going to work. Aw, <laughs> man, I'm going to make it try. Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> but anyways... Oh, Mr. Krabs. <laughs> we, got, we got them firing at the Russians still here in the monocle. David Gear said, y'all should eat hot dogs instead of pizza one night. I know, right? Like, we actually had pizza tonight, funnily enough. Uh, that's actually ironic, really. Man, we roast hot dogs every night, basically. Oh, I yeah. have some occasionally. I mean, I don't work the hot dog stand, but I do grill them uh, from time to time. <laughs> that's, that's, I'll tell you that. And we can see the after action report coming up here on screen. We see them now moving back to the Bradley. And we see the light flooding out of the back of the Bradley. Heather Fitzgibbon, you don't even know. They do more than plot. They want us dead, literally. The sad thing is, they'll probably all die before I do. <laughs> uh, because they're going to overdose. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> that's the end of that clip from the 47th Mechanized Brigade, showing some incredible work in the FDFK area. And that is largely all that we got to see in the Avdivka region. But nevertheless, we have been hearing that Ukrainian analysts say that Ukraine could obtain a decisive victory without Russia using nukes. And a lot of people have been thinking about that, really pondering that, and wondering, is that really possible? Is that something that can actually happen in this kind of a conflict? And Matthew, what do you think about that? And what is everyone else thinking about it, too? So we asked the audience, we said, what are your thoughts about U.S. analysts saying that Ukraine could obtain a decisive victory without Russia using nukes? It looks like 39% said true, Russia would walk away. 33% said false, Russia isn't going to walk away. And 17% said it's too early to tell. And on this one, this is a question right here that was brought up is I saw a former commander of the European forces uh, make this statement uh, saying that Ukraine could basically have a decisive victory without Russia ever using nukes on their country. And for me, I'm going to be a little bit undecided on that because Russia has invested a lot of time and a lot of money into invading Ukraine. And even though it is a losing battle for Russia, I'm not sure if they'd simply just walk away and simply just say, okay, Ukraine has it, we, we accept defeat, we're going home. I think they would probably throw a fight or throw up a, throw a fit uh, before they were doing that. And it could involve maybe using a nuclear weapon. But nonetheless, Ukraine is going to be armed to the teeth once this Ukraine aid package passes. Uh, if it does pass, and I think uh, Russia is going to quickly be grappling with that possibility pretty quickly. But Enforcer, what say you? In my honest opinion, I would have to think that they we're probably going to see uh, that they probably can walk away. I think they probably will end up having to walk away because they're not going to nuke Ukraine because their nuclear doctrine, just like ours, is a defensive one, meaning that they don't fire nuclear weapons in an offensive manner. And I don't think the Ukrainians are ever going to threaten or jeopardize Russia in a way where they could justify the use of nukes, uh, at least doctrinally, uh, although they could do it anyways. It doesn't matter what their doctrine is. Uh, I think they'll probably end up having to pull out of Ukraine like they pulled out of Afghanistan back in 1989. I think that's probably how it'll end, in my opinion. Um, but I hope that does address that fairly well, because we do have a historical precedent for them just walking away at some point, um, even when they could have nuked someone. Um, but, you know, then they just left. They walked off and never returned. Uh, but also, another thing, I saw something in the live chat here. I saw someone say in the chat that someone is saying that a Russian sub is off the coast of Florida and the over-the-horizon radar is on. Mr. Krabs, there's always a nuclear submarine off the coast of Florida and the over-horizon radar is always on. That's why we have them. We turn them on every day. They're on all day, every day. That's the point we have them. 
and the nuclear submarines were always off the coast of Florida. The U.S. nuclear submarines were also off the coast of Russia in every single part of the world imaginable. There is a U.S. nuclear submarine in the Barents Sea, in the Baltic. There's one in the Pacific. There's one up here, uh, up in the East Siberian Sea. They're everywhere that they can be. As long as there is an ice cover, they're there. Uh, and same with the Russians. The Russians are uh, have submarines, at least some of their larger submarines, that are always somewhere just off the Atlantic or somewhere near the Gulf of Mexico or on the West Coast. That's just how it is. That's why well, that's why these countries have nuclear submarines, so that way they can sneak them around a little. Um, it, it is there, though. There's always one there. So uh, if you're hearing that and someone is saying that we're all going to die and we're all going to get nuked in the end of the world tonight, I actually have to say they said that for the past three nights and no one has died yet tonight over over the past three nights last nights if you get what i'm saying um because for three days now people have been coming in this chat and they've been saying oh so and so is saying that we're all gonna die tonight and then no one dies that night and then it's the next night and then everyone comes in and says oh we're gonna die tonight again no one's dying tonight i can tell you that no <laughs> one's dying like <laughs> like okay like nothing's happening like that um I, like <laughs> like if you watch those kinds of channels Great, but don't come in here telling everyone we're all dying tonight because we're not dying tonight. Everything's under control. Everything's fine. The Russians are not preparing a preemptive nuclear strike because the person who said that also said that we were going to be a nuking Iran in the next 12 hours, and that was two days ago, and we never nuked Iran. We're not even touching Iran. Um, so I'm highly doubting that the Russians are going to be nuking us tonight just because they got the feeling. Um, I, I have to be entirely honest. So with that, I hope that does address that well. Um, and also, um, let's see. Uh, someone said, if we die, will we know it? Well, I think you will. <laughs> like, that's, I, say, I feel like you will, because you will not wake up one morning. Um, but then also, man, they say, y'all feeling alive? It's like, I saw a lot of doomers in the chat. They're like, I woke up dead this morning. I'm like, dang. I'm like, that's, it. that's rough. Um, but still, I just have to put that out there. Because uh, I'm like, honestly, it's getting a little tiresome at this point to see so many people come in. And now I'm seeing it's from the same channel every night. Uh, everyone's dying tonight. All right. No one's dying tonight. I don't know why the hell they keep saying that. It really is just raw misinformation at this point to say we're all getting nuked tonight and it never happens. And I, I've seen that they've been doing this for months now. It's just that it's never come over on this channel. So I'm going to have to... Like, it's like it's the like same group of people like that um, uh, Will Barker fella who puts up those red cards on their thumbnails every single night and says, alert, alert, the missiles are firing every single night. And then they're like plugging some like uh, survival food or something in their description box and everything like that. It's those channels that like create the fear every night. And I don't know why people keep tuning back into those channels every single night. Because we can't be dying every night. It's like, you got to pick one. You can't, you can't just like keep it going all the time like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm also going to have to be quite honest. I think we're actually going to have to start removing um comments in the chat that are made as statements from so and so who says we're dying every night from a nuclear onslaught that's coming in an hour said again tonight that we're going to die in a nuclear onslaught that's coming in an hour we're going to have to start removing comments like that from the chat because then i start seeing that it spreads and other people start asking oh my god is this true are we all going to die no y'all are not no one's going to die and uh, like no nuclear attack is happening everything's fine um and and it and it's not going to happen like like if you know anything about reality in the world, you know that both Russia and America don't want to fire nuclear weapons. So a night isn't going to come around like just tonight of all, all nights where they go, you know what? I think I'm just going to launch nuclear weapons in America. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Like no one does that. Why in the world would someone want to do that? Like they don't want to die. They would die if that happened. You know why? Because we got nukes and we nuke them back. They'd all be dead. So why in the world are they just going to go, yeah, tonight's the night I want to die. And I want to die by taking out America. You know, it's like, that is dumb. Like, no one's going to do that. Like, unless it is literally a last case scenario where the country that, like Russia, like Russia is going to cease to exist if they do not launch those nuclear weapons, then they'll launch them. But then and only then would they launch nuclear weapons like that. That's that's the only reason that that would happen. Uh, and so I just want to address that incredibly well. Um, so. I'm, I'm just going to put that out there. And also, this is a rule from here forward. If I see any mention of so-and-so channel said, we're all dying tonight from a nuclear onslaught, that comment will be removed, possibly even timed out, because I'm, I'm just not here 
uh, to hear fake news. Like, I hate to say that because I rarely ever say that, but that is entirely fake news. There's no such thing as a nuclear onslaught happening. They're, they're over the horizon radars are always on. That's what NORAD's called. Their job is literally to keep the radar on all day, every day until the end of time. And Russian nuclear submarines are always off the coast of Florida because that's one of the best places to put them. And we also have our nuclear submarines right off the coast of Russia. Uh, so it's nothing new. It's just standard business as usual. Um, and it's, it's, we're not not dying tonight um so with that i hope that addresses that well and we're now going to be moving on from that and down into the area of nova mikhalipka where we also get to see the russians losing another assault this was a footage put out by the 79th air brigade we can see it's nova mikhalipka again and we can see all of the russian losses that have been had around the area that's a pretty sizable number right there that's a lot of them oh toasty oh Oh my god, what was that? Book bags. <laughs> it, it, it was school <laughs> materials. Oh, look, they're racking up those uh, numbers, aren't they? Look at that, 64. Wow, they're going strong. Wow, two chairs, two chairs. <laughs> and they're obliterating these uh, these these folks. I gotta say, it's impressive. 86 feet, 90, 90, no, 100. Oh my lord! And also, also by the way, Robert Harrington said, "Tomorrow night, are we celebrating support for Ukraine when the bill passes?" Absolutely. On the stream, we'll have a big celebration tomorrow, like a, a a moment of celebration on the stream if that bill passes tomorrow evening, because that will be a feat. Obviously, it's got to get through the Senate, though. That's another thing. Uh, but once it gets through there, it's a done deal. Like it's going through, it's getting signed, and all that good stuff. So we'll definitely be having a, a little bit of a celebration moment tomorrow night. Absolutely, and I will. I will bet y'all that all of the fear and pandemonium that y'all been hearing just to just to rack up clicks on the internet will all come down and you'll see that it'll pretty much get passed without any opposition. It'll be minimal opposition at best, most likely. Um, but oh my lord, dude, look how many armored vehicles have been destroyed around Nova Mikhailivka. It's up to like 312 now, just in this one small village. Look at this. 314. That is wild, actually. That's crazy to see that that many armored vehicles have been destroyed. But with that, that's the end of that clip. Really nice to see the 79th Air Assault Brigade show off how many vehicles have been destroyed. And moving on from that and down to the area of Myrna, we also get to see the Ukrainians damaged Estrella today in the southern front. Here's the clip. And we're going to be muting that. By the way, folks, we are incredibly close to 209,000 subscribers. We're only 100 subscribers away, uh, so we're probably going to hit 209,000 subscribers by the end of tonight or by tomorrow. That's like, a, what, a, almost getting close to, what, 20,000 subscriber jump or something like that of the last few days? Uh, something like that. It, it's been huge. Uh, it's Let's see, right now, we're at like 16, 17,000 subscribers over the past two days alone, something like that. That's, oh, that's a lot. That's crazy, man. That's a lot. That's a that's a great deal. That's a lot of them. And Pamela Floyd, that's not being political. That's correct. We know that the Senate's going to rubber stamp it because they've already rubber stamped everything in the past. Like it wasn't even it wasn't even close. It was just unanimous nearly. But with that, that's the end of that clip. Slow and nice to see that Strella getting blown up. Meanwhile, we also got to see some Russian boats getting blown up down here in the area of the Dnipro River. There's the Russian boat, the Rossiski Flota. Actually, float them. Look at that showing up on thermal, the waves and stuff. It showed up like there's a little bit of white streak. Man, that, that water a little warm. <laughs> that water be warm. And there goes the grenade. And there goes the boat. You can buy me a boat. No, we can't <laughs> because it's blown up. You see, what happened was, was the, when the impeller passed through the H2O, the impeller created some centrifugal forces and created heat, thus thermal energy, and it created a little bit of a reaction, which was seen in the thermal goggles, also known as FLIR. Man, you smart. <laughs> oh, like, man, I just threw out a bunch of buzzers, man. Call me smart. I'm, I'm getting smart out here. I don't even have a degree in it. I'm not good at maths, but I'm smart. We need to be like those three-man panels. Oh, my God, you're such a genius. Wow. Oh, my God. Wow. 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 Yeah, if you, say it in, if you say it in a monotone way enough and also say it with enough bass in your voice and stuff like that, it's believable. You see, the impeller passes through the water, and it goes this way, and if you question me, you're a punk. <laughs> no better yet better yet i'm i'm a plumber 
and I know everything about nuclear science. <laughs> like it's at the average YouTube yeah. channel. It's like <laughs> it's like I don't think you do. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like just, wait a minute, dude, weren't you selling hot dogs just yesterday? Oh no, not I was, me. <laughs> I was a, the best rank I ever achieved was an E three in the army, and I know how core level doctrinal strategy on the battlefield is implemented. It's like, dude. You like change tires. Like <laughs> it's like if you did do more than that. You're on bathroom duty. Go clean the latrine. Yeah, yeah, that's literally it. It's like listen, it's like like re re respect a little, but at the same time, it's like no. It's like you got as much knowledge as any average Joe on that. You know, you like like you don't have any more. Uh, but anyways, moving on from that and down to the area of Dijonkoi, we did get to see some damage that was caused to Dijonkoi from the strikes yesterday. We got to see that they hit the S-300 site just south of the airfield. That appears to be what exploded in massive form. And we also got to see some additional damage that was caused throughout the entirety of the base and some fires that spread as well, showing that it was a fairly large attack that happened on Dijonkoi. Uh, but with that, it's now time for us to move on out of Crimea and on up to Kiev to cover the speech from President Volodymyr Zelensky here on day 786 of the wire. And so, Without further ado, here is the speech. Or is Give it a speech. speech? Is it a speech or is it more so a peach? Oh, it's a big speech this time. It's one of the cinematic ones. Let's see. In uh, subtitles, we want them things on and we want them to auto generate the English. Wow, YouTube is just lagging in every way, isn't it? Like, did it just pick the our chat is lagging so bad, man. Like the chat is like pissing me off tonight. It's showing up like 10 chats and then it goes silent for like five seconds and it throws a bunch of chats back up. It's just lagging. I'm telling you, man, it's, it's annoying. Like even over here, it's lagging for me to pick the subtitles, but nevertheless, here is the peach. Дорогі українці, українки, важкий сьогодні день. Ракетні удари. Дніпро. Просто по центру міста, по звичайній забудові. Будинок, вокзал. Також сьогодні Синельникове, Кривий Ріг. Удари по Нікополю. Удари по Атецькому регіону. Знов по бортах, по експорту нашого продовольства. Сьогодні ж обстріли і удари по Донеччині, Миколаївщині, Харківщині. Багато постраждалих. Усім надається допомога і я Дякую кожному, хто підтримує зараз наших людей, хто ліквідовує наслідки російського зла. Мої співчуття усім, хто втратив рідних та близьких. Коли Україна звертається до партнерів по системі ППО, які у них є, є на складах, на базах зберігання, але потрібні тут, саме тут, щоб захищати життя, ми говоримо про справжнє союзництво. І ми в Україні цінуємо зусилля кожного лідера, кожної держави, які дійсно активні, дійсно виконують обіцянки та намагаються збільшити можливості нашого повітряного щита. Саме з Дніпра сьогодні я звернувся до учасників спеціального засідання нашої ради Україна-НАТО. Це було засідання на рівні міністрів оборони країн Альянсу. Російські терористи вже, на жаль, мали надто багато часу, роки цієї війни, щоб знищувати українське життя. Цей рік вже не може бути часом просто для подальших обговорень. Все цілком конкретно. Україні потрібно ППО, і партнери можуть із цим допомогти. Нам потрібна артилерія, і це те, що є у світу. Тільки достатня кількість ППО і винищувачів може відігнати російську авіацію. Рішення потрібні. Рішення можливі. Кожен у світі, хто дійсно прагне миру, повинен не боятися проявляти свою силу, щоб захистити життя. Дякую усім, хто зараз з Україною, з нашими людьми, з нашим захистом. Дякую кожному у Дніпрі, в усіх інших наших містах, в селах, хто спрямовує свої сили так, щоб вся наша держава була сильною. Будь ласка, дбайте про ближнього, допомагайте, коли це потрібно, дбайте про всю нашу Україну і говоріть всіма методами світу правду. Правду про те, що світ може. Слава Україні! Героям слава! And here I'm Slava. And here I'm Slava. And with that, that is the end of the speech. 
from President Vladimir Zelensky. And that moves us on into the second segment of the stream. Where are we going to talk to all y'all? I don't know why I'm screaming like that. I have no idea. But beyond that, it is going to be the second segment of the stream. The fun part where we get to talk to all y'all and really unwind. We get to talk about all today's events. What happened in Iraq? What happened in Iran? What happened in Ukraine? What happened in Israel? What the dog doing with the butter on it? We get to talk about everything. Anything and everything I want to talk about, we get to talk about it. We get to talk about y'all's hometowns. We get to talk about video games, your favorite foods. We get to talk about history. We get to talk about literally anything y'all want to bring up. We get to talk about it. And it's a very fun time for me because this is the moment where I really just get to chit chat with all y'all. And so, Matthew, oh my God. Also, real quick before we jump into our last poll question, uh, just an update on the Middle Eastern situation. We did cover that quite extensively on the stream we ran earlier today. Um, but we are learning one last piece of pretty big detail uh, around those strikes which occurred in Iraq earlier today. Uh, we are learning that Israel is completely denying any involvement in it. So that creates a bit of a kofefe, a big one actually, because now we're not really sure who has struck the Iran-backed forces in Iraq. Um, and like I said earlier, it brings up the possibility of a false flag attack, perhaps by even Iran, uh, to cause a bigger escalation. Right now, we simply don't know, but we do know that Iran is meeting once again in their little small little shabby war cabinet little meeting uh, to discuss what they're going to do about it and also conduct an investigation. Um, so that's all we know at the moment on that. But unfortunately, do you have anything you'd like to add about the Middle East? I gotta say, um, it's very interesting to hear that it's in the middle of the East. Uh, I always thought the East was kind of towards the right, but apparently it's in the middle. Uh, but beyond that, I gotta say thank you so much for sharing that breaking news, Matthew. And with that, it's time for us to get on into them questions. So what do we got, Matthew? All right, and moving into our last poll, it says Zelensky warns that if Ukraine loses the war, then World War III is almost a certainty, and do you agree? 57% said yes, Russia would invade NATO at that point. 19% said no, Russia would stop with Ukraine. 14% said it's too early to tell. And for me personally, I believe that if Russia were to take Ukraine, and remember, they invaded Ukraine with no provocation whatsoever. Russia's lame uh, excuse for invading Ukraine is that NATO was encroaching on, you know, up close to Ukraine. And that's, that's not a reason to go and invade a foreign country. Not a reason whatsoever. And I think Russia would move on beyond Ukraine. Maybe not necessarily to a NATO country first, but certainly they would go on over to Moldova, see if they could take a piece of that, and they'd, then they'd move on from that point as well. So I'm with the 56%. But Enforcer, what say you? I would have to say, in my honest opinion, I believe that if Ukraine did lose the war, it most likely would lead to an inevitable third world war uh, with the Russian Federation invading the Baltic states and also trying to invade some parts of Poland. I believe that that is a certainty if Ukraine loses, and that's why it's so important to support Ukraine and help them out, because war is only on the horizon. A lot of people don't get that. Just because you stick your head in the sand and you let the bad guys do whatever they want, that doesn't mean that the bad guys aren't going to be knocking on your door next, and then what are you going to do? So it's best to face them at the head right now and stop them before it becomes a worse situation and so with that i hope that does address that the best i can and uh with that we are on to the questions all right so moving back into our super chat questions we have one from plant lady who throws in a very generous 100 dollars donation hey! massive support from plant lady and thank you very much for supporting our work and also you've been a long time channel viewer as well so thank you for both of those and she said i got my flag last saturday and absolutely love it and I can't wait for it to be a collectible because our enforcer will be the president one day. Yay! And she said, I do love the marmot. And they love taking Twinkies from our backpacks while we were camping in the Sierra. Hey! <laughs> thank you for the massive support, plant lady. And also, uh, thank you so much for getting an LSA flag. We absolutely love that so many people got the flags and thought they were absolutely incredible. Uh, hopefully, some of them will be making it to Ukraine eventually. We know that one of those is not going to be making it to Ukraine anytime soon. Um, but beyond that, I got to say <laughs> that it is absolutely one of them. Andy knows the story behind that. That's why he's laughing. But, uh, <laughs> but beyond that, I got to say... Thank you so much once again for having such high hopes that I'll be the president one day and it'll be a collectible. I would hope that they are, and I think that's why a lot of people ought to be hanging on to those flags because there are not that many of them in reality. I mean, like when you really think of the overall number, the complete size of the Lee Spring Army and the amount of signed flags that are out there, there's not a lot of them. Uh, and so if anything ever does happen um, where I do become the president, y'all will actually have a flag that I signed about 17 years before I became president, and y'all will be able to say that I was a fan of 
uh, of the of enforcer of president enforcer before president enforcer was president enforcer and he was just the enforcer. Uh, and I would have to say that that would be really cool to see people like I was flagged. You know, it'd be really cool, Matthew, is that in the future in uh, 2040 when I'm at a political rally, like out of all of the uh, like you know out of all like the little political signs and all that stuff that people would be holding, that, like every like there would be like one LSA flag with my autograph on it flying out there somewhere in the crowd. That would actually be so cool. To to see uh because i would know that y'all been around forever and have been watching me every single step of the way uh that would be wild to see that would be incredibly cool and i gotta thank you so much for uh having such massive hopes because i would hope one day i can become the president um it's still something i want to do because while i love covering news i would love to be the one who does things that is worth covering in the news and hopefully very good things for the united states uh and and also i'm glad to hear that you love the marmot hey let's get that marmot up there on screen baby hey! and let me go get it <laughs> pull him up pull him up oh man and here we have it. Oh, it's the Marmot. Hey! Hello there, Governor. How you doing tonight there, Governor? Have you heard of the hot dog man recently? Or has it been about a week since we've heard from him? Oh, dear me. I think he's thrown in the towel, Governor. Raise the rent and lower the, uh, lower the income. That's the way to do it. What do you have to say about that, Fly? Fly has nothing to say because the Fly is currently uh, on vacation. Damage! <laughs> oh man! Excuse me, sir. Would you mind taking me on vacation? Uh, but never mind, actually. Right. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What do you have to say about that, fly? Oh man! You, you know ruined what? it. That's just, you ruined you it, man. You know what, just man? And put it on the fly. Put it on the fly. Hey, hello there. My name's Hot Dog Man. I used to sell sabrettes, but now I'm working in the trenches. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm not going back to manual labor. Guess what, buddy? You're going straight to the salt mines. <laughs> Doesn't have fun. <laughs> Can't find me, you bastard. <laughs> <Let me on. laughs> no, you bastard. Oh, goodness. I love the Marmot. I absolutely love the Marmot. I, th I think the real ones are cute, but this one is hilarious. Uh, and I got to say that uh, it's really cool to know that they actually liked eating the Twinkies specifically. Like They're like, oh, hello, Governor. Ew, you got like sausage. Ew, gross. A Twinkie, though. <laughs> like, it like, takes the Twinkie specifically. Uh, I think that's hilarious. But still, thank you so much once again for the massive support, Plant Lady. And thank you for having such incredibly kind words to say. Thank you for the massive support as well and helping us to make this thing possible. Because if it wasn't for folks like y'all who really did love this channel and enjoyed it enough to support it uh, day in and day out, every single day that we're on air, and help us to be able to do this as a job, we wouldn't be able to be here uh, doing two streams a day. I can tell you all this, though, because I have seen some people saying, is two streams going to become the norm? No, no. I'm like, like I can't say this enough. I'm actually like worn out already, uh, and it's only an hour and a half into this stream. Uh, we, I cannot do two streams a day. It would just be too much of a workload to do. And on top of that, earlier today, uh, I was actually really heavily involved in doing some other stuff in the background for stuff we might film in the future, um, gathering up something. And then it had an issue, so I had to I had to go sort that stuff out. Uh, so it took a lot longer than I thought it would, and, and now that's not complete, and that's being pushed back by a couple of days. Uh, so yeah, it's been a long day. Uh, that was actually the more tiring part of the day was that part because there was a lot of uh, driving and shuttling stuff around that I was doing to try and get that done. And then I really ended up back at square one. But hopefully that will all be sorted out by next week at some point, And then they'll all be good to go and just fine. And we'll eventually make a video on it. Uh, and then you all will get to see it yourselves. And then you all be like, wow, that's so cool. Uh, but beyond that, um, I, I can't do two streams a day. Uh, I, can pro I can do one video and one stream a day, uh, and those are the days when I have a video, which will be tomorrow. I'll make the video and then also run a stream as well. Uh, but I cannot do two streams a day again because I'll start getting worn out a little too quick. So from here forward, it is going to be one stream a day. If some breaking news happens in the Middle East and we run that stream, we're probably just going to cover the next 48 hours of Ukraine the next day after that instead of trying to run a stream like this again. Um, but beyond that, Thank you so much once again for the support, the massive support plant lady and helping this channel to keep on running. And thank you for throwing in some incredibly kind words as well. And with that, we are on to the next one.
Also, by the way, I have an update about our channel merch also. We almost forgot to mention this tonight. Oh, yeah. On, a Tuesday, on Tuesday night, on our Tuesday stream, we will be announcing and also showing you all and releasing the new uh, a April Enforcer merch. It's going to be something really cool. I think you are going to like it. All the finalizations have been made, and we're simply putting a few things into place to make sure everything goes smoothly with it. But the new merch is designed. All the production is set up. And it is ready to go. And once again, like always, we will be donating 10% of every single purchase, the profits of 10% of each purchase, to United24 to save lives in Ukraine. And that's going to be coming out on Tuesday, so y'all stay tuned for that. Uh, and we'll be wrapping some things up in the background with it. But with that, we're moving on to our next Super Chat. And this one goes to Snow White, who puts in a $50 donation. And thank hey! you very much, Snow White, for that support. And also, being a longtime channel legend as well. And uh, Snow White said, if you got paid per click, the LSA would be loaded. And please take a live chat question. And thank you so much for the massive support, Snow White. And... That is funny to say. If the L if you got paid per click, the LSA would be loaded. We would be actually. That that's actually crazy. If we if we made a dollar per click, uh, yesterday, we would have made one point one million dollars. Uh, which is uh crazy to think about. We didn't make one point one million dollars because we don't even run ads on the stream, and all those views were on a live stream. So everyone just clicked on and watched for fun. Uh, and we didn't make a cent unless if there was a super chat. But you know something, you know something, folks, that is actually really crazy. We actually have the playboard stats. So the playboard is kind of where all the stats are accumulated. They're not all perfectly accurate. They actually underreported us last night for our number of live stream viewers. But I want to quickly drag this over on screen for just a second because I'm going to show you all the top 100 live streams that were on YouTube last night uh, because this is actually quite shocking. Look, Dateline NBC is number 97. That's kind of shocking. And then we, as we scroll up, you can actually see Law and Crime Trials had 9,000 live viewers. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. But as we scroll up even higher, do you see that oh, CBS? CBS? Yeah, look, CBS, number 77 with 10,000 live viewers. Pretty wild, pretty crazy. But then up here, we got PBS at number 70 with 11,620 live viewers. And then we got a pl um, uh, facts and logic. Um, um, facts um, and logic. I'm going to destroy um, facts and logic. Um, um, the plane's going to crash. Um, <laughs> the plane's gone. Um, but beyond that, 11,924 live viewers. And, and the only reason I'm bringing up this person, because we don't get into politics on this channel, is that I'm sure that every single one of y'all knows who this is. So keep in mind they're at number 67 with 11,924 live viewers as of last night. All right, so then we're going to scroll up a little bit more. And then we can see that up here, um, we've got, uh, let's see here. Trying to make sure, trying to make, <laughs> let's see, nuclear flying. Uh, Dr. Disrespect at number 32 with 20,000 live viewers. Uh, Disney Jr. had 17,000 live viewers at number 36. Uh, and then scrolling up even higher, we've got, and let me see here, let me make sure, uh, Agenda Free TV at 29,888 live viewers. Uh, we then have, uh, let's see here. Call of Duty League. Call of Duty League at 33,233 live viewers. ABC News was at 34,202. Uh, and we got to see that Fox was at 42,888. Wow. We were number uh, five. Oh, oh, hey, look, it's some guy called the Enforcer. We're like, we're, we're four spots below the Zone Boxing. Isn't that crazy? And the Zone is a freaking huge company. That is wild. Yeah, that is. That is crazy to see. We were actually the fifth largest live stream on the entire platform last night uh, at 50. Well, actually, uh, technically, we were at 54,000 live viewers, so we'd actually be in the number four spot, according to our analytics. Uh, but still, doesn't matter. We were in the number four, number five spot. We were in the top five largest live streams on YouTube last night, uh, which is insane because we usually get uh, around at our highest uh, in the bottom 70s, uh, 70 to 100, somewhere around there. Last night, we were number five in the world. And YouTube is the largest platform of its kind that does this sort of stuff in the entire world. And we were number five on it. Uh, that was. I think we're punching above our weight at this point because we're going to, we're going up against the, the big boys. We're going up against the multi-million dollar media conglomerates. And we're above them. That was wild. Yeah, I mean, we were above Fox News. We were above ABC News by a large margin. I mean, Fox News is number seven. It's only two slots below us. But according to what Playboard says, it was a whole 10,000 live viewers below us at their peak at number seven. So we were way above 
Uh, for, we were way above even the closest news organization last night, a mainstream news organization that was running this news. We beat them all. We finally did it for one day, for one day of this channel, well, the first day ever, we beat every single mainstream news organization that was running a story out there on YouTube in a live stream. That's crazy. What's even crazier is that According to the most popular, which this is even wilder, while Fox News was number three on the entire uh, platform yesterday for the most popular uh, channel out there, if we scroll down, and let me scroll down a little bit more, because the big news channels will beat us just because they have a massive amount of subscribership and everything, um, but when we scroll down, for one day, we were at number 62 in the entire world for being the most popular, popular YouTube channel on the platform that day. We were the 62nd largest. That is actually really wow. crazy. I like I can't say we even beat out iShow Speed, and I'm sure that many of y'all who have been on the internet know who iShow Speed is. Uh, and it's it's really crazy to see we beat a lot of people. I mean, we beat so many. Um, and let's see who else is down here. We beat Making Kelly, uh, which many of you know who that is, but but we beat her, you know, and, and I've got to say this, like, I'm not saying that I like her or dislike her or anything, but y'all know who that is because they've been on the mainstream news. We haven't, and we still beat them. Um, we beat all kinds of people. Uh, let's see here. Who else is down here? Pac-Man. Pac-Man? Yeah. I don't even know who that is, but his last name is Pac-Man. Uh, where the hell is that? Oh, the David Pac-Man show. I don't know what that is either. Uh, but anyways, we were still on up there. We were number 62 in the world. That's crazy. We moved up 480 spots. Uh, 400 whole 80 spots uh and it, it just blows me away it really does and i gotta say um like uh i gotta say thank you so much to everyone who really watched this show yesterday and really did enjoy it we put so much effort into it. we put so much of our soul into this each and every day and it's crazy to see that we were the 62nd most popular youtube channel in the world yesterday and not only that we were the fifth uh most viewed live stream in the world and we were on we were really number four but you know in on on playboard we're number five uh but beyond that absolutely crazy absolutely insane and and i gotta thank everyone so much once again for being with us and sticking you, with us wait can you click on the news category over there on the left? Uh, see if there's a news category. It's on the left, a topic slash category. Let's see here. YouTube. Let's see. Uh, news and news politics. and politics. I think we're under travel and events. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> look, look at that! that. Look at that. Ah, ah, oh number one. But dang, Insta. I think we're in the wrong category. There's Insta three sixty below us. Storm Chaser Brandon. We should be in this category, I think. <laughs> yeah, we should be in this category, but I keep on putting us under the travel and event section every night. So we're in the travel and event section, but we we obliterated everyone in the, in the travel and event section. No one Damn, came man, close. the people in the travel and events didn't stand a chance. <laughs> Do we came? I think in? we were. I think we were in the news and politics category. We might have been punching a little bit lower, but uh, why oh, yeah, my lamp lower. flashing? What the hell? Let's Hold on, what? let me go see what the hell's up with that. My lamp is flashing. Huh, that's weird. I was uh, trying to connect my Wi-Fi lamp. Uh, who's doing that? So let's see. We would have been like number 16 in the news category, but the travel and events category, we're slaughtering right now. <laughs> like, dude, we're like, we're way above the next person and they are way above everyone else. Like we're like 900,000 views above everyone in the travel and events section. Um, but let's see. The most live viewers. Let's go back to that again. Now let's go to travel and events. Come on. Work with me. Work with me here. Come on. Come on. Oh, it's not going to work with me. Come on. Oh, oh, man. I mean, come on now. Let me go take it and refresh it. Snapper oh, said, did y'all beat out those Paul brothers? Uh, I don't know. Okay, here we go. We were number one. <laughs> that's, that's a weird oh, number look one at that. Too. Dang, man. That, that's really unfair to post in the travel and event category because look at how like close the competitor is right there. I don't even know what that is. It looks like a Vietnamese channel of some sort. 13,000 compared to 52. Good Lord. <laughs> that's a world. Dude, in the travel and events category, we're like, we see no God here. The only me. Because we're like way above everyone else, dude. We are 40,000 above the next person in the number two spot. Uh, we really do need to change over to the news. Uh, in the, but the thing, though, here's the reason why we don't switch over to the news section is because it's news and politics, and it's going to drag in a lot of political people. So we move it over to the new to the travel and events section because it is an event. We're covering events every night, current events that are going on around the world. But I'm not covering politics, so that's why we pick travel and events. Uh, so, but but it doesn't matter because you know we're still still doing fine. But it's also funny, Matthew, when you look through like the like the the things beach walking 
walking walk live Epcot, and then you got Ukraine, Russia. <laughs> it's just like in the top. <laughs> oh goodness! I go back to the news and politics category for live viewers and stuff. Let me see what the numbers look like over here. I'll see where we'd probably rank. We would have obliterated everyone. We would have been. Oh yeah, we would have. We'd have still been number one even in this category. But this was honestly like we need to start putting news and politics on there. I think that's more accurate. Yeah, it's just that we don't cover politics. You know, like that's the thing. And I'm like, because you know, if I put it there, it's actually going to draw in people who are in the politics. And you're going to hear, um, okay, um, thanks, or, or you're going to hear, I'm a young Turk or something, and it's going to be like, oh my god, and like we're going to be banning people all night long, and it's going to be what about old Turk. Nah, no one likes them old geezers. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyways. Thank you so much for the support, Snow White. Uh, and and that it's actually crazy how well the channel did last night. It really does blow us away. Uh, it, it it's just insane. It really is. And I can't thank everyone enough for sticking with us for so long, sticking with us for over two years, seven or eighty six days as of today, uh, because we've really been able to blow this thing away. Also, Matthew, you might want to eventually like clip that and put that out on a community post that we were number one in the category on the entirety of YouTube. Uh, well, really, number five worldwide. That's probably better uh, because that that's every category. We went into Brawl Hollow, the Thunderdome, and came out number five. Uh, so I, f I feel like that's probably better. Uh, but still, I got to say, thank you so much, Snow White, for sticking with us for so long. Thank you for supporting us tonight, and thank you for helping us keep this thing running. Because if it wasn't for folks like you, Snow White, we wouldn't be able to keep this thing rolling. We wouldn't be able to make it possible. And for that reason, I thank you so much once again for supporting us tonight and helping us to keep this thing rolling and with that i hope that does address that hey incredibly well and with that we're on to the next one alan alan the alan. next one goes to john garner who puts in a 20 dollar donation he says for the coffee fund stay awake lsa john i've been off of coffee all day long i hadn't had a drop of coffee or caffeine all day long and somehow I'm still ticking along. I've been busy all day. I made the short war video earlier today, which YouTube demonetized because it had something sensitive in it that they didn't want us to say. <laughs> so uh, that was a wash on that front, sadly. I hate that. But uh, moving on from that, then we went to covering the stream. Then I went on to making finalizing the merch store and all that other good stuff. It's been a busy day. I've been working since I woke up until now. So it's been like a full 12-hour day already. Um, but Enforcer, what said you? I would have to say... Uh, me personally, I uh, thank you so much for supporting, uh, supporting the coffee fund, John Garner. And I have to say, I need it. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I've been getting worn out. Um, I think it's because uh, I have to do a lot of pre-prep before each show. And so I started working today when I got home fairly early. Um, and also, I didn't really get to eat well. That's probably another thing is that I didn't really get to eat supper. So I've been kind of starving the whole time. I ate something before the first show, but then I didn't get to eat anything after that because I didn't have time. Uh, and so I really am, I think I'm tired because I'm starving to death. And I kind of like ran myself like an old Toyota Tacoma today. Uh, but, but beyond that, Thank you so much once again for support. More, more like a Toyota Hilux. That's what I was running like today. But beyond that, thank you so much for the support, John Garner, and supporting the Coffee Fund, because it is folks like you who helped to make this channel possible and helped me to drink enough coffee to be here on air right now. And so with that, thank you so much once again, and we are on to the next one. The next one goes to Cliff H, who puts in a 20. And thank you, Cliff, for that support. Hey. He says, toast to my dad. Rest in peace, December 2023. And also, my condol uh, condolences to you, Cliff. He says, enlisted the U.S. Navy in 1959 and served as a cryptologist, CTI, with a Russian language specialty. Chief Petty Officer retired in 1979 from active, and his advice, never trust a Russian. He says, my hero. And thank you so much for supporting. I'm sad to hear that you lost your uh, dad a while ago, but he was pretty right, dead on the nail. Actually, uh, our granddad, before he passed, also said the exact same thing. Never trust a Russian. I don't know what it was with everyone back then and saying don't trust Russians, but I feel like they had some kind of ancestral wisdom that was passed down through the generations that everyone just forgot because they went, ah, boom us. And then they just forgot it for some reason for like 10 years. Now everyone's back to don't trust Russians. Uh, and I would have to say it's very good knowledge to live by and also a really uh, amazing track record that your dad had as well. And thank you so much for supporting and sharing his story with us, a little bit at least. And thank you once again for uh, sharing his wisdom with the channel because I would have to say that that wisdom stands true even in the modern age. And so with that, thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that. And we are on to the next one. Yeah, all, all right, and I'll move on to our next one here. Uh, also, someone said, uh, what the hell is a Wi-Fi lamp? Well, funnily enough, real quick, like 20-second story, I got this lamp 
that was, um, I think it's from Alibaba or something like that, but somebody was like drop shipping it on Amazon. Chinese. What? <laughs> it's Chinese. Yeah. It's, it's probably listening to everything I'm saying, and they're probably like ripping us off right now and putting the stream audio somewhere else like from listening through the lamp. But uh, the lamp will occasionally just start blinking out of the blue, like out of nowhere, like flashing and pulsating, like something is wrong with it. And you can actually pair it to the lamp, and you can look at the lamp on your phone if you just want to look at your lamp when you're away from your house. I don't know why, but a pretty cool lamp. But anyways, that's a goofy story. So I'm moving on from that, and we're going to Panama Floyd Super Chat. He puts hey. in a $20 donation. Thank you very much, Panama, for that support. He says, Enforcer Rabbit Hole for Orkin Glide Bombs. They seem to be Soviet munitions with ersatz wings and a damn near useless copies of Western Guidance Systems. And that is absolutely true. They really are like cheap imitation knockoffs of Western uh, systems. They are old Soviet Fab 500s, Fab 1500s, and the like, uh, which they just strap a bomb, like a wing package onto. They drop it off at the bottom of the plane normally, and then the wings activate, and then they go to a predetermined GPS coordinate. Um, and there's a lot involved. There's not really that much involved in that. Really, a lot's involved in getting the uh, bombs up to the right altitude and dropping them at the right airspeed for the bombs to successfully work uh and so that's really all i have on them for the most part but they are older soviet bombs it's just that they get modified with a little glide kit pretty much uh and so with that i hope that does address that well and thank you so much once again for support and helping this channel to keep on running and with that we are on to the next one and the next one goes to Coin Collector, who puts in a 20. And I think that was their first ever Super Chat, by the way. Hey! Thank you very much, Coin Collector, for that support. They said, no need to mention anything, and I appreciate your news coverage. And we mention everything. Well, I thank you so much for the support and enjoying our coverage. Uh, and we can never go without reading a Super Chat. It's a rule of this channel that I made way back in the day, is that everyone who supports the channel, whether it be a dollar or whether it be $500, which is the minimum and maximum that you can put in, every single one of them will be read out, and we will thank each person individually. Because $20 to one person might be $500 to another, and on top of that, we are appreciative to every single person for any bit of support they send in, whether it be a dollar or whether it be $500. Uh, and so thank you so much coin collector for throwing in, um, those kind words and thank you for enjoying our coverage and supporting it because you're helping this coverage to be possible. Uh, the one thing that's very neat about this channel is that this channel, um, has a very special role for its viewers is the viewers themselves are the reason why the channel is able to run. Uh, it's not sponsors. It's not ads. Uh, it's entirely the viewers themselves who get to support the channel and they help to make it possible. And so Coin Collector, you're one of those people tonight who is helping to make this channel and the stream possible. And so thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one needs to go to Snow White. And it needs to go. It's going to go to Snow White. And it goes to a $20 donation. Hey! And as you can hear Snow White, my brain is beginning to go. I think the signs of that were probably happening about 20 minutes ago, but now it's really becoming apparent. But Snow White, thank you very much for the support. And they said, I will end this hot dog convo. He had strip lights the one time I observed. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. Enough said, simply put. Uh, well, there's there's a lot more to it than just the strip lights. Uh, also smoked uh, smoked weed on his show publicly, which is against uh, against guidelines. Uh, he man, also smoking on that roach. Aw, man. Um, let's see, what else? There's, a, there's actually a lot. Like, there's a load. But, you know, like, I feel like we're talking about someone who's retired at this point. And honestly, Snow White... I feel like they ought to be able to enjoy their retirement because soon before long, the rent's coming around again, and I don't think they'll be able to afford the rent. Um, and, you know, if they can, ah, oh well. If they can't, <laughs> uh, well, if they can, that's uh, that's going to be interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm sure we're actually going to watch the implosion of a star over there on that channel when that comes around. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but with that... Um, Really? Uh, like, for real? Yeah, no joke. Oh, no. <laughs> They've already it's gone. up to you whether or not you want to wait or, like, you know, do whatever, but it's up to you. We're going to wait. We're going to wait till Tuesday for the official release. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's interesting to hear. And whoever did that, that's kind of funny. <laughs> that's, that's actually crazy. Like, there's, there's, a, there's a serious demand. But uh, still, uh, let's see here. Let, let, me, let me see how to, how to address Snow White's Super Chat. Uh, you know, if they can't pay rent, hey, I'm fine with that. Um, like, you know, this 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 guy in particular with his stupid little uh, like strip lights that you're talking about has threatened us 
with death, threatened this, uh, to be maimed, assaulted, battered. This one is encouraged his audience to try and do the same thing. Has tried to hunt us down. I mean, we found out that they've tried to figure out everything about our lives, including uh, even when we didn't mention our um, law school that we were at before we, you know, dropped out of law school. Uh, they actually ended up calling the law school, and uh, it was very lucky that this happened. I'll actually tell you all this because this this happened way back in the past, uh, like months ago now. Um, but there was a there was a warning that we got, like a tip off. Someone said, "Hey." You might want to get in contact with your law school because I just heard that on their server, their Discord server, they're all planning to mass call in and say that you have a weapon and you're planning on causing destruction at the law school. If y'all get what I'm saying, I can't say the actual thing on YouTube, uh, but I hope y'all are kind of getting the deal. Many of y'all will know what I'm talking about. This is a, it's a stereotype that this is a very common thing that happens in America these days. Uh, so as soon as I heard that, I said, oh, damn, that's really serious. Like, you know, if they get those calls in and loads of them and they don't know any better, they're going to swat us in the middle of us sitting in a class or something like that, or maybe even swat us here while we're at our house because they, because we're not at school at that point when those calls come in. So I went to the police office, uh, at the, at this university that we were at and I sat down with the chief of police guy there and I explained the story and the guy said, so are they saying this and this about you? And it was literally exactly what these people say on a daily basis. I said, yeah. And he said, well, you wouldn't believe it. I just got done getting off the uh, getting off the phone with like the third one today, and I said, "Really?" Uh, and he said, "Yep, uh, that's right." And uh, they were sitting there saying that we need to keep an eye on you because you're a dangerous person. You're going to do something um, uh, something dangerous here in the near future. So we ended up filing a police report. Uh, funnily enough, Hot Dog Man is actually trespassed, from what I understand, from that campus still um, because they made sure to trespass him in at Cinium or, or something like that. So if he ever shows up on that campus, because we were able to track down his vehicle and his license plate and everything, there's a sensor that will find his license plate, notify the police immediately, and they'll arrest him on the spot if he ever shows up to that university, even when we're not there or going there anymore. Uh, so that's kind of funny. Uh, but beyond that, there's an actual police report out there now about what was being said over the phone about us, the threats that were being made and all that kind of stuff, uh, because we were actually in legitimate danger. These people were actually trying to get us hurt and killed in any way they could, uh, even if it meant trying to place fake calls with the police department in our area and have them end up swatting us and in their hopes possibly end up shooting us and killing us because of a misunderstanding at some point. Um, so... That is, uh, that is how sick that community is. So that's why I am very adamant uh, on, on if the guy keeps on bringing us up, I'm not going to stop calling him hot dog, man. I'm not going to stop saying crap about him. And honestly, I hope that his YouTube channel does fail and he ends up under a bridge. I mean, the guy, the guy would have had us dead, um, at the, by this point, if it was up to him and his group of people. Uh, so if, if him living under a bridge is the worst thing that happens to him, I'm perfectly fine with it. Uh, but that's, that's actually something that happened. Uh, way back in the day, we kept that under wraps, a, a, a kind of an okay bit. We kind of touched on it a little bit with all of y'all. But now that this is months down the road and that stuff is largely passed, and also on top of that, his community has completely fractured and fallen apart. And a lot of those people that we believe were a part of orchestrating that against us uh, are now against them. It, you know, it's like, you know, it's not going to happen again. Uh, and on top of that, we don't even go to uh, university anymore of any kind, uh, of any type or any sort. So the chances of that happening are decreased. And on top of that, we've already notified local law enforcement about a year ago about these people. And they already have some precautions set up to where if anything was to happen uh, or if any calls were to be set in, it's not going to go that way where we're swatted. It's, it's going to go a, a different way instead. Uh, but that, that's, yeah, that's the actual kind of danger that we've been living in because of these people. We've really downplayed a lot on stream. And then goofy people want to come in here, uh, Snow White, about strip light hot dog man and go, oh, why do you keep on making jokes about him? I mean, you know, he's just saying stuff about you. Doesn't he have a right to free speech? It's like, no, the guy has tried to actually get us maimed and killed if possible. Like, you know, the, even stalked to the point of knowing our house layout and trying to figure out how to threaten us by knowing our house layout, you know, stuff Stuff like that. Like, they're actually a very sick group of people. I wish YouTube would pay attention a little bit more and end up um, taking some action against them. Because the fact that they've been able to exist like that for over a year and a half now, it's actually crazy. Uh, but it's just a fact of life at this point that we have to live with. Uh, but still, thank you so much for the support, Snow White. And I hope that does address that well. Not to get entirely serious, but just to share with you all a little factoid, a little story about what happened a while ago. Uh, but with that, we are on to the next one.
And the next one goes to Blue Flam 777 LSA once again, who put in a $50 donation. Massive support from Blue Flam, hey! and thank you very much for that. He says, I love you, the Brothers Enforcer. Thank you. Thank you very much. He says, I know it's thank not you. easy to deal with news and chat and life. And I just want to thank you both for the best, <laughs> excuse me, for the best channel on YouTube. And by the way, um, <laughs> he said, somebody don't like YouTube, he says, Swab Ukraine, LSA, question to the chat. And hey, thank you so much. We love you too, Blue Flam. And thank you so much for the massive support. Uh, and it's it's actually easy to deal with the news. It's just not easy to deal with everything else in between. Uh, and so I got to say, uh, thank you so much once again for the support and just it really being a massive supporter of this channel, Blue Flam, and helping us to keep this thing rolling um, because it means a lot to us. And I, I got to say, thank you so much once again. And, uh, and thank you for saying that we're the best channel on YouTube. I think there's a lot of uh, channels out there that do a great job, but I'm always happy to know that there is a massive group of people who believe that this channel is doing the best out there compared to the rest. And we try our hardest to make sure that we're deserving of that title. And I hope that we were able to do that again tonight with this news. Although it was a little less uh, energetic than normal, but still, thank you so much once again. And Long live the LSA, and we will send the question to the chat. And so what do we got, Matthew? And the question to the chat is going to go to Bobo Yazala, who says, do you think the orcs will surrender in mass once the AFU start pushing hard? Um, I would have to say that uh, the, the, uh, the armed forces of Ukraine isn't going to be surrendering in mass at any time soon. They still have some fairly high morale, so I don't believe that I'll be coming around the pipe uh, any time around. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that well. And thank you so much once again for support, Blue Flam. And Tesla said, uh, Enforcer is one of those old geezers you mentioned earlier. Does this mean you don't want me? Uh, no, like it's a joke. Like it's like we're not sitting there saying that old people are garbage. I'm just I'm just making a joke. Jeez. Uh, like we, we want you around. Stick around a little, Tesla. Stick around a little. Uh, but with that, I hope that does address that well. And we are on to the next one. Hell, we get called young whippersnappers like uh, every other day. Like, <laughs> you'll have at least like 50 people coming in here per night that's new and be like, How old are they? Be like 23. What? No, that, no, no these way. Stupid another, little pep, like, these stupid little squakers uh -huh. <laughs> on some crap like, like that. Are you telling, are, it's like, are you telling me that before you knew our age, like to the random person that comes in here, before they knew our age, they were going to take our opinion at face value, but now that they know our age, they're going to discount it? It's like, what? I got to tell like, you. It's like, just, just take the argument at face value and let me know if it makes sense. I got to tell you, man, the disrespect we get for, really the only disrespect we get uh, on YouTube is because of our age. Like everything we do is completely discredited because of our age. Uh, it's so crazy. Like even like every, every YouTuber pretty much in the Ukraine war category, most of them, um, being more dried up, uh, <laughs> you know, than us and uh, have many more years above us as well. Uh, all want to be angry at us because we're young and going at it instead of them, you know, just kind of doing it because they're burning out. Uh, and I'm like, why? You know, it's like we could have gotten along with everyone. Um, but that that's like the large thing that we've realized is that people disrespect us just because we're young. Uh, and that's crazy to me because usually we get things more dead on the nail and more right than they do. Uh, not to make this an age thing because it isn't because I don't really think anything matters uh, about ages at all as far as intelligence or uh, ability is concerned. Uh, but I always do find it weird how much people insult us for being young, although they also don't say we're not wrong. They just say we're young and therefore we shouldn't be talking about it. But then at the same time, I will bet money that these same people, who I'm guessing are old, then complain that young people aren't in politics or aren't concerned about world events, although they take fat shits on people who are young and then get involved in world politics and in the global events. Uh, so... Uh, I hope that does address that. Well, we want you around, Tezza. We want you around. Uh, but but still, with that, we are on to the next one. The next one goes to Octavian Timurasunu, who puts in a 10. And hey! I'm going to have to adjust the super chat just a little bit, Octavian. But thank you for the support um, to basically weave even bob around the politics of the thing. Uh, he says, without getting into politics, do you believe that any U.S. Uh, leadership are compromised by Russians acting, uh, uh, purposely acting against U.S. interest? And if so, what should be done? Uh, and I thank you so much for the support uh, in helping this channel to keep on running. And I'd have to say, 
uh, that as far as support, uh, all we can hope is that the United States will start to agree unanimously and begin passing support again, and hopefully that will start to turn the situation around. There's not much more that the Europeans can do on their end. It's really on the American side of things, and it really just matters that both sides agree, and then the support will flow the way it needs to flow. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that well. Uh, thank you so much once again for support and helping this channel to keep on running. And Danny V, why are you taking that uh, statement I made out of context? But with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one here goes to John Allen, who puts in a $10 donation and says, to what extent do you think that AI has been used in the Ukraine war to suggest strategies or possible plans of action? And I've heard that AI can come up with things that people have never even thought of. And that's true, John. And I wonder uh, to what extent has the U.S. provided intel to Ukraine that maybe has been modeled by AI? Because I don't think Ukraine has access to that technology, but we do know for a fact the U.S technology because i just saw this morning uh, that the u.s air force is using ai to pilot a remote aircraft to get in actual dogfights with a real aircraft in a training simulation and they the air force didn't say which one won they didn't say if the ai controlled jet one or the human controlled jet one but in a simulated dogfight i think the ai jet one and they didn't want to admit that um, and you know, it seems like we have pretty good AI mapping software now and models and it's taking off every day. Uh, but enforcer, what say you? Um, I would have to say that I'm not really sure how much AI is involved. Uh, one thing I do know though, is that a lot of people are putting a uh, way too much stock into AI, like, you know, really, uh, over believing what it's capable of, at least in the modern world right now. Um, you know, like maybe in 10 years, some of the statements people are making about AI will be true. But at the moment, I have found that AI is still kind of a little clunky and a little cumbersome in some ways. Uh, and it's not perfect and fine tuned. Uh, because if it was, everyone would be out of the job already. And it, no one's out of the job yet. There's, there's, still, there's still some life left in uh, folks working in most businesses and most practices. So uh, I hope that does address that well. And I thank you so much once again for support and helping this channel to keep on running. And with that, we are on to the next one. All right, and the next one goes to Wyatt Logan, who puts in a 10 and says, first thing, you two are badass. Thank you, Wyatt. Hey! He says, the amount of verifiable news you two get to the LSA, even before the major news networks, is outstanding. And second, Matt in school, who was your favorite leader to study and why? And favorite leader to study, honestly, it would be the my favorite U.S. president, which is Eisenhower. That would be the most interesting person I've studied. Um, but speaking globally, uh, the most interesting leader that I've studied, honestly, let me do some thinking about it real quick. Uh, honestly, I would say the answer, but I'm scared that YouTube might come down on us because I'm speaking of it in a historical context, but at the same time, I don't want to make any statements that are going to be taken out of context, like I'm praising something or something like that. But during World War II, if y'all know what I mean, there was a particular fella out there um, that was a very bad guy, but he was sort of interesting to study just from a historical perspective and a political science perspective as to how he gained power so quickly to basically commit the worst atrocities the world's ever seen. And y'all know who I'm talking about. But Enforcer, what say you? I would have to say that uh, one of the most interesting leaders uh, that I have ever heard about in world history and in U.S. history uh, was Teddy Roosevelt or Theodore Roosevelt, or as the British call him, Theodore Roosevelt, which is really the correct way to pronounce the name, but in America we call it Roosevelt. Uh, I would say that is the most interesting one in my opinion. Uh, I know who Matthew's talking about. He's talking about Mustache Man. Uh, and Mustache Man is uh, is fairly, he's actually fairly interesting. Um, and, you know, and, and, and I will say this though, uh, the guy is an atrocious dictator, one of the most evil ones the world saw right up there with Stalin, Mao, uh, and also Pol Pot in Cambodia. Uh, but beyond that, studying these leaders is a very interesting thing because they're actually, because, you know, usually, uh, to the public, you know, without a deep amount of study, they're always presented as these two dimensional caricatures of what they really were. But once you study them deep down, you realize that these people were very nuanced. They weren't you know, just cartoonishly evil people. They were actually people that did heinous things. And that's what makes it so interesting to study them is how in the world did these people justify these heinous things? And what were they like as real people? Uh, and you find out that, um, that the mustache man was really a, a, a sick sociopath as a normal person. Like, like on really drugs. Well, on drugs, he was also, he was also like a, uh, a suicidal romantic. Like, did you know that Matthew? 
I did actually. He he was a very complicated person with the personality, and obviously when he got on the drugs later, that exacerbated it. And he already kind of had these uh, bad experiences in life, which led him to be somewhat you know a little bit evil. And then he turned really evil when he got power, and that's when he started absolutely uh, terrorizing the world and doing things that nobody thought was even possible when it comes to atrocities. And it's it's also really interesting to see that. There was an attempt, a fail, like you know, an attempt to overthrow the Weimar government, which failed, and then he completely repackaged the approach and went at it again, and massively succeeded. And that was that was the thing that was so interesting is that it was someone who failed and then adapted because because on the other hand, unlike uh, unlike Mustache Man, who failed and adapted and then became the sickest, most evil uh, leader in Central Europe or Western Europe that one could imagine. Then you had Stalin, who never uh, failed and adapted. He just failed and failed and failed and failed and never adapted. And then he eventually just somehow failed his way up into being the general secretary, uh, which is really interesting to look at because there are two of the most evil people in World War II, um, although there were there were still uh, evil people like Mussolini, although Mussolini was kind of like a goof. Uh, I'm not going to even lie. Like, yes, they, the Italians did commit atrocities, but they were like the goofiest people in World War II you could imagine. Like no dis no disrespect to Italians, because usually Italians are pretty hardcore in any other part of history. But under Mussolini, it was like the goofiest time in Italy's history. Like like truly goofy. Uh like at least the trains ran on time is what they said, but everything else was just screwed up beyond belief. Uh but beyond that, it's it's just so interesting. So freaking interesting. It be, uh, but uh, because like it's like it's crazy because like did y'all know that uh, that Mustache Man actually every time he dated a, a, a like anyone and he got heavily involved with them, he would always like envision himself going to a bridge and jumping over the side with them to the, his death, and that was like the most romantic thing he can imagine. It's like that is a really messed up person when that is the most romantic thing you can think of. It's like, honey, what would you like to do for a day? How about a candlelight dinner? Hmm, I don't know. How about jumping off of a bridge? That sounds kind of romantic. It's like, I don't think this guy is sane. Like, I don't think this guy is actually mentally there. Uh, but, but beyond that, getting back you know, to... You know, in the, in the modern day, though, like the most interesting leader globally right now to study, uh, ranked in order, I would say number one, and once again... I don't want anybody taking this out of context. But I know someone's going to try to clip it, but don't clip it. I don't give a damn. Really, honestly, I don't give a damn. You can clip it if you want. I don't care. Um, the most interesting leader is probably Putin because the way Putin grew up in the absolute poverty and somehow worked his way and snaked his way through Russian ranks to get up to where he's at currently, which is the absolute dictator of Russia, and now he's basically the modern-day uh, Hitler, uh, which is, uh, I think people are going to look back on Putin and they're going to really put him in context and he's going to be right up there with uh, Hitler. He's going to be right there with the worst of them. Um, and right now we view him as being bad, but I think later when everything is actually uncovered, it's going to be even worse than we're expecting currently. Um, and the, the how he got to power is like one of those rare like flukes uh, that only happens once in a like a hundred years or something like that. Kind of like the way Hitler came to power, um, and it's very fascinating to see. Xi Jinping is also very interesting as well. I don't know as much about his uh, rise to power, um, uh, but I know more about Putin. Um, and then third, I can't get into it for political reasons because it's the U.S. But um, but in force, do you have anything to add? Um, I won't have a much to add on uh, leaders at this point. But still, thank you, Wyatt Logan, for saying that uh, we rock and and saying that it's an amazing channel. Uh, I, I know Wyatt Logan, you've been around forever, and I got to say, thank you so much for still finding this to be an amazing, incredible channel, and thank you for the support and helping this thing to keep on running. And with that, we are on to the next one. The next one goes to Fred Mathewson, who puts in a 10. And thank you, Fred, for that support. He says, is Iran claiming the attack did not happen so they can get out of having to counterattack and send for Fi? And, hey, and thank you so much for the support. And, Matthew, could you reread that one again? Because I, I didn't really hear much of it rather than Semper Fi. They said, is Iran claiming the attack did not happen so they can get out of having to counterattack? Um, I believe that they were trying to until uh, the attack happened today inside of Iraq. And then the Israelis said that they weren't behind it. I think the Iranians are going to say that the Israelis were behind it and now escalate. Uh, and so, and also on top of that, we do know that their S-300 site got knocked out, so they can say whatever they want, but there's actual damage. Uh, so they'll probably have to end up admitting it at some point in the future. And so with that, thank you so much once again for support. I hope that does address that well and simplify. And with that, we are on to the next one.
The next one goes to Nanya Business, who puts in a 10 and says, On Wednesday, when you bet chat, no nukes were flying, I realized if wrong, we'd be all dead. So you wouldn't have to pay. And my God, you really are grifters. Oh, just kidding. Oh! Love the show and keep it up. <laughs> I don't oh. go grifting. Oh, man. I, I've grifted so hard. I've been taking a five day holiday. Oh, man. Oh, man. Just eating those gummies and playing those games, bro. Oh, man. But beyond that, I will say that. Matthew, I hate to say this. My mind is really going. Could you reread that one again? They said on Wednesday when you bet chat and no nukes were flying, I realized if wrong, we'd be all dead. So you wouldn't have to pay. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's absolutely right. I mean, like, I know if I bet money on nukes aren't flying, I'm not going to have to pay. Because if I'm wrong, guess what? I'm dead. So <laughs> so come and get the money. Then <laughs> It doesn't matter. Uh, but um, with that, that's that's something that, I just, I, I cannot stand, like, I get people being really excited and fervent and reporting wars with a lot of fervor in one way or another. Like, I, I can get that, because people are supporting of one side or another, just like we're supporting of Western causes. We're supporting of Ukraine and Israel. Uh, but with nuclear weapons flying, what people are talking about when they clickbait with that kind of stuff is that they're actually talking about something that is going to directly affect their viewers. They are telling their viewers, you are going to die right now. Get on this show because I'm telling you you're dying tonight. And people get on because they're like, oh my God, am I going to die tonight? And then they do that every single day of every single week forever. And they, and they prey on ignorance as well. Because like when someone came in here earlier and said... So and so said there's a, a Russian submarine off the coast of Florida, and our over the horizon radars are on uh, in North America. The first two things I knew, because I I know a decent bit about this stuff, is one, Russian submarines are always close to the United States. Two. The overhorizon radar is always on. So if you make a news segment about that, you are literally reporting that the lights are on in your house and that you're sitting down in your chair. It, it may as well just be a normal day. It, it's nothing new. It's nothing special. It's just normal. It's normal happenings. It's like when the mainstream news sits there and says, Russian nuclear bombers flew close to America's airspace. It's like they are always doing that in the Bering Sea. That's what they do. Like, that's 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 what always happens. We fly bombers towards the Russian airspace, and they intercept air bombers. It's always happening. So there's no point in reporting it because it's just a, a, a nothing burger. It's a no big deal kind of a thing. Uh, and so... When I heard that and people started coming in and people were asking us in large numbers, am I going to die tonight? I was like, this is ridiculous that people are having to ask this question. Um, and, and people are still asking this question tonight. Uh, and I have, I, I'm, I'm usually not one to pick fights uh, with other channels. Don't want to pick fights because I got better things to do. Uh, and I'm not picking a fight here, but I'm, I'm going to make this as a general public safety announcement. If you ever go on a YouTube channel and they're saying that nuclear weapons are flying and everyone's going to die, I would generally not watch that channel again. Uh, or I would uh, unsubscribe from that channel and just not listen to their news because they're, the only time they're going to be right, it's not going to matter because they're never going to be reporting the news again because you're going to be dead and they're going to be dead. So if if they're saying that and it turns out that you're alive tomorrow to be able to see that stream has ended, you should unsubscribe and never watch that channel again because it's raw misinformation at that point that is being overhyped every day for views. Uh, and, and that's something that I'm not a big fan of. I'm a big fan of being... a uh, a patriot and, and saying things optimistically, maybe about a war, like a war in Ukraine or the war in the Middle East. But I'm not one for telling people that they're all going to die to try and get a click and a view. That That's absolutely crazy to do. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that well. Thank you so much once again for support. And with that, we are on to the next one. The next one goes to Lord Lathos LSA, who puts in a 10. And says, Lady Lathos and I love our flag, and we wanted to commend the Enforcer for the awesome autograph. Looks absolutely stunning, and looking forward to seeing the new merch store, and we have a Tumblr from the first. Hey, and thank you so much for getting that Tumblr. That was actually one of the lowest selling items we ever had on the store. So that's really cool to know that you got one, because very few people have a, a Tumblr from the first store. Uh, but thank you so much for loving the flag and loving the autograph. Uh, the autograph took a lot of work to perfect, and then I just like was like a printer, and I did the same autograph on hundreds of flags. Uh, but still, I'm glad that you enjoyed it, and thank you so much for getting it. Uh, and I'm glad that it looks stunning. And also, uh, I'm glad that you're looking forward to seeing the new merch store. It's going to be released on this Tuesday, 
Although someone already found it, like I'm, I'm going to be honest with y'all, someone has already found it. Matthew told me has already placed orders, uh, which is <laughs> which is that was shock. yeah, which is insane because it's technically not even live. But someone was able to creep their way into it and get the mugs. Oh well, damn it! I, oh my god! Damn uh, man! Damn, oh man, my god! Oh, I'm so tired. I screwed up. Um, but but we're just going to act like I didn't. They were able to get in there and get the stuff that's already in the store. They already placed some orders. So that was crazy to us. Like, it really was. <laughs> Beyond that, thank you so much once again for the support and helping this channel to keep on running. Uh, and also, hopefully some of our flags will be making it to Ukraine. Um, uh, if one of them isn't, I'll, I'll give you all, like, the annotated version of that story. Someone promised us up and down that they were going to be able to get the flag to Ukraine, so we ended up giving them a free flag because the people who said they could get the flag to Ukraine got a free flag so that way they could bring it over there and drop it off without having to give up their own flag. Uh, so this person got it, and then they tried, like, the, the way I viewed this, uh, after promising us they could get it over there and they were going to be heading to Ukraine soon, they then tried to... I don't know, the way I viewed it was scam us for airplane tickets or thousands of dollars for airplane tickets. Uh, and then we were like, what the hell do you mean? We, you said you could just get it over there. And then they tried to make us sound like bad guys because we weren't wanting to give them thousands of dollars for airline tickets. Uh, and who knows, maybe they get that money and then just disappear off the face of the earth. Uh, and so now we know that one of the flags that was supposed to be going to Ukraine is not going to be making it to Ukraine, um, which is a little disappointing. It angered me a good bit. Um, considering that that person tried to take advantage of us, uh, you know, and trying to get a flag over there. Uh, but beyond that, I'm glad to know that a lot of flags are out there because there are hundreds of them really, uh, that are, that are autographed and hopefully there will be hundreds well on into the future. Uh, and so with that, thank you so much once again for support, Lord Lathos, LSA, and helping this channel keep on running. And I'm so happy to hear that y'all do like that flag. And of course, long live the Lee Spring Army. And I can't wait for y'all to see the new merch store that will be coming out this Tuesday. And so with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Mock Scott, who puts in a 10. He says, quote unquote, this news is a little bit shorter tonight. He says, I just, ju oh, damn, and force you over getting orders. Oh, my goodness. But anyways, Mock Scott said, I just jumped in and you're still going. And I found you guys yesterday. And I don't know your average live stream times, but I thought that was great. And keep it up, boys. And thank hey! you, Scott. And thank you so much for the support, Mass Scott. And thank you for uh, thank you for supporting the stream. It is going on a little bit longer than I thought it would. I'm I'm trying to round it out around two and a half hours long tonight, so that we were not on too much uh, because we already ran another I think two and a half hour long stream a little earlier. Uh, but I gotta say, um. I, I, I thank you so much for enjoying it. I'm glad that you think it was great. Uh, and thank you for wanting us to keep it up. We will make sure to keep it up. And your support is going to help to make it uh, possible. And so with that, thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. Uh, and with that, before we move on to the next one, I see some people asking questions. I'm not going to say the name of the person that I feel was trying to scam us. Um, but I will say this. Uh, they had been around for a little bit. Um, but the thing is, is that we were totally fine with kind of being scammed out of a flag like that, that, that was aggravating, but we were like, that's okay. And then we were kind of okay with having them around, even after they tried to scam us out of thousands of dollars for supposed airplane tickets. But the thing that really pissed us off is that after we just sat there and say, Hey, look, apparently there's been a misunderstanding. Let's just forget about this and let's just go separate ways. How about that? They then decided to start trying to throw insults our way after we had been polite with them the entire time they were trying to scam us out of a flag and thousands of dollars. Uh, and so, that's when we got pissed off, and that's when they got banned uh, out of our DMs on Twitter, out of the live chat. Uh, and I saw someone make a mention about them a couple of days ago. Uh, they said, well, there goes so-and-so. And I was like, if you only knew the story as to why they're gone, you would understand why they're gone. Um, because because that was just annoying. Like, like, I don't know. Maybe they weren't trying to you know, rip us off for airplane tickets, but that's the way it came off to me, especially after they promised up and down that they could get it there. Um, but with that... I hope that does address that well. And also, I hope y'all can understand now, that's why we are so adamant and so militant about making sure that YouTube fundraisers only run through YouTube Give and we don't do uh, YouTube fundraisers for Jack, Jill, and Joe because you could go, hey, give me $20,000 and I'll get a drone to Ukraine and fly it over there. And then we give them $20,000 and then they disappear off the face of the earth or they say, oh, I'm sorry, I actually didn't account correctly. I need another $30,000. And then we give them another $30,000 and then they disappear off the face of the earth. That's why we're so militant about making everything transparent 
transparent and having it run a very specific way on this show as far as money is concerned. Uh, because when money is involved, weird things always happen. Like that. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that well, uh, at least the best I can. And with that, we are on to the next one. Also, uh, let's see here. Moving on to our next one, we have a $9 Super Chat from Soggy. Uh, and they said, Enforcer Matt, I've been part of the LSA since day two, based on my viewing records, and any chance of a promotion from Private Soggy? Hey, and thank you so much for the support! And yes, you can get a promotion. What would you like, Sergeant? Would you like to be a Sarge? Would you like to be a Sergeant Commander of the Platoon? Of course you can get a promotion. Give yourself a promotion. Whatever you want. Whatever prank you want. Um, but beyond that, Thank you so much once again for support and helping this channel to keep on running. I hope that does address that well. And with that, we are on to the next one. All right. And our next one is going to go to Margaret Hemsley, who puts in an eight and says, shout out to the Bobby Caralfa birthday yesterday. And also hey! happy birthday to you, Bobby. Happy belated birthday. And take a live chat question, please. And thank you so much for the support and helping this channel to keep on running. And hey, I got to say. Thank you so much for shouting out that Bobby Caralfa had a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. Happy late birthday to Bobby Caralfa. I hope you had an amazing one. And I hope that you have many more coming in the future. Uh, and so with that, thank you so much once again for the support. I hope that does address that well. And thank you once again for helping this channel to keep on running. Um, and also... Uh, also, something else I saw in the live chat before we move on to the next one. I want to make this quick announcement. We have seen people out there who are apparently scalping fake merch. Um, I don't know, Matthew. You've seen that, right? Uh, you mean like uh, ripping off our IP? Yeah, ripping off our IP and stuff, you know, making hoodies and shirts and stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay, so so I, I want to make sure I want to make sure to corroborate that with Matthew so that way I wasn't seeing something that's old news now. But there are scalpers out there at the moment that actually are ripping off our designs and our IP and making merch off of it. Uh, and I just want to make this very clear. If it is not coming from an endorsed, uh, it is, if it is not coming from the official Forcer store, which we would have a link for in the description on the stream or would be attached to this channel, and you do not see that merch item here, it is not ours. Do not buy it uh, because that is someone trying to rip you all off and scalp off of our IP. Um, so I just want to make that very clear because I saw someone say, uh, you know, the official enforcer store or something, something. And I was like, you know what? I need to make that clear because I don't know if any of y'all are out there buying LSA shirts because I just want to let y'all know we don't have LSA shirts at the moment. Um, we have a flag and we have something else that's coming up on Tuesday, but we don't have shirts. We don't have hoodies. We don't have anything like that. So if you see any of that out there and it's not on the official enforcer store website, that is a scam. Um, and that is not our merchandise. Uh, so I hope that does address that fairly well. Do not fall for that scam. Um, and, and look, Matthew put down the link there. If it's not that link right there in the chat that Matthew just typed in, that's not ours. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that. And we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to, uh, let's see here. Margaret Hemsley, once again, who puts in a seven says, hey. I call a general order for hitting that like button. Hey, and I gotta say. General order for hitting the like button. Hit that like button, Jack Nabbit. Uh, and thank you so much for the support, Margaret Hemsley, and bringing that up. We got to have people hitting that like button. It's incredible to know. Uh, and so with that, I thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And with that, we are on to the next one. Also, Enforcer, I think the store is a uh, uh, secret might be wide open, so I think you might be okay to go ahead and announce it if you want. Why is that? Because we've gotten a lot of orders. Oh, really? Yes. How many texted to me? <laughs> but beyond that, um, I'll just tell you, we've gotten four so far. Four? What a lot. Yeah, multiples. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, really quickly, I'll show this to you all. So this was supposed to happen on Tuesday, but we'll run it up until Saturday of next week. Uh, the official Enforcer store already has a new merchandise item on it. It is the LSA mug. Uh, we've been able hey! to... Hey! Look at those two big mugs right there. Look at those mugs. Look at that. And it's not an ugly mug, it's a beautiful mug because it's got the LSA Eagle on it. Let's go! But beyond that, uh, we've been able to get some mugs. The mugs are 20 bucks a piece. Uh, that was a fairly good price. We tried to figure out how, how low we could get it. That was about the lowest we could get it. But they are absolutely beautiful. Premium black ceramic finished mugs that are 100% ceramic with a smooth black finish. Our mugs are printed using a state-of-the-art process called sublimation, which is an incredibly neat process to make sure that that eagle will stay on there practically for forever and also have a nice glossy sheen uh, we also it made it so that way it's the perfect size for hot coffee or tea it has an 11 ounce capacity 
empty out those bladders because it's going to be filled up with the contents of this mug right here. And it's ideal for a cup of coffee or tea while watching The Enforcer. And I mean, I got to tell y'all, with what we got coming down the pipe, y'all got to be ready for a cup of coffee because y'all might be getting uh, some coffee in the future. Some maybe some special coffee. I don't know. I'm just putting that out there for all of y'all. That might be coming around. And not only that, once again, like with every merchandise product on this channel, 10% of the profits from this limited edition run of LSA mugs is going to be do donated directly to United24 and help out in Ukraine. So, make sure to get your mugs. Uh, it is official enforcers... Oh, Oh. And and also real quick, I saw um one thing. This is one thing fighting Finn. I was supposed to finish up, and that's why we weren't going to announce it. But I did not have the password on there. I had forgotten. I had taken it off to test it earlier today, so it's wide open now. But I need to add to the site. the uh, The mugs are microwave safe. Um, they are good for that. So I, I need to add that to the information as well. That was in my final like uh, review process. I would have added that in. Uh, but I'll just tell you verbally, it is microwave, uh, microwave safe. Uh, and also, some people are saying, how long is this available? This is going to be available until Saturday of next week. Uh, so that way we can round out this uh, limited edition merch run before the next Sunday night fundraiser. Uh, this was actually supposed to be promoted and plugged on Tuesday of next week and then ended on Saturday. So that way it doesn't inter uh, interdict a single fundraiser at all. But now that the secret's out, I'm just letting you all know up front, we got these mugs. And if you all want to get one, you can go ahead and start ordering them right now. So with that... I hope that does address that the best I can. Uh, we don't have a link in the description below, so you would have to actually type it in. It is official, and this is all lowercase, by the way, officialenforcerstore.com. If you type that in, it will take you directly to the official Enforcer store, and you'll be able to get an LSA mug there. There is no limit on how many of these you can order, so if you want to buy like five of these or 50 of these, you can order as many of them as you want. Um, and so with that, I hope that does address that well. Once again, it has the LSA Eagle on it, just like the flag, because the LSA is, of course, really the IP of this channel. The Enforcer is the name of the channel, but it's really the least spring army that lives within the channel that gives it its soul. And so we're making sure to do a lot of LSA-themed merch items, and the mug is the next one, and here soon, y'all might have something to fill that mug with. I'm not going to tell y'all what that is, but it's, it's in the works. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does uh, address that well. Uh, and let's see. And I'm making sure to keep up to date with everything in the chat. But with that, thank you, everyone, once again, for being hyped for these mugs. A lot of y'all think they're absolutely stunning. And also, really quickly, we did make a, a, a special decision with this because there was a little bit of a discussion that we had uh, about where the where the eagle was going to be on the mug. Uh, we kind of talked about having it canned to the side where it was going to be easier for right-handed people to see. But considering that I'm left-handed... Um, which is very rare because only about 10 to 12 percent of the population in the world is left-handed uh, We actually decided to center the mug directly on well to center the eagle directly on the front of the mug So that way left-handed and right-handed people could see uh, the same amount of eagle on both sides of the mug uh, I did that because uh, I know left-handed people hardly make up any part of the population But I'm left-handed and I wanted to have something that I'd actually be happy getting if I got it So uh, it ended up being centered. Uh, we we were actually, like, that was actually a scientific debate that we had about what it should be, uh, what it shouldn't be. We both ended up deciding it would probably be best for both left-handed and right-handed people uh, to get a good look at the eagle on the mug. Uh, but with that... Like one politician said, I love a good debate. I love a good argument. It was a heated debate. <laughs> That's it, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was, he it was heated. Well, like, we went on for hours about where that eagle was going to be on the mug, and we ended up both... Finally coming to the to the decision, it should be centered. Uh, so so overall, it looks good. I think it looks great. And also, having it centered, Matthew, we were able to put two mugs on the screen. I like that. Yeah, you know why I did that, actually. This was a web design choice for me. If we would have had just one mug in the center of the screen, it would have showed up good on mobile devices. But here on the desktop, that little banner in the middle about order now, that would have completely blocked the logo of the mug itself and would have not shown up good at all for the landing page. So I had to put two of them side by side. I even debated putting a fleet of mugs right here on this main little banner page right here just to like make it look cooler. But I did that and it looked too junky. So I went with two. And there we have it. That's why the eagle is also centered as well. It helps out a lot. <laughs> so with that, uh, let's see. Um, and let's see. Oh, you. Oh, I don't think we have to worry about that, Bruce Lee. I think it's with a different provider, if I'm correct. Uh, but with that, thank you, everyone, once again, for being really happy about these mugs. I hope uh, all of y'all are able to get a mug and enjoy a mug. Uh, and with that, we are on to the next one. 
Also, by the way, if anyone has any uh, concerns, I saw someone saying something about don't ship it using FedEx. Uh, the, the mugs are shipped in a very high-quality styrofoam container. Uh, uh, it's a very like reliable thing. It's not going to break on you. And if it does break on you, let us know um, because we'll take care of it. Uh, and obviously, the, the, it's non-refundable. You'll see that on the site. It's non-refundable. But if something does break, we will take care of it. Um, but it's, it's shipped very well. It's very nice, and it's a nice packaging. It's not going to break. Um, the odds of that happening are slim to none, so you're, you're safe. But anyways, moving on to our next Super Chat, we have a $12 donation from Duncan VR. Hey! And he puts in those animal noises, and he says, ba 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 oh my, ba ba oh man, I'm telling you, quack, quack, oh man. Gushlik Vlaikin, ba-ba, hot dog man wants to rent the Ruski Hoss, ba-ba, it's portable, moo, marmot, LSA, ba-ba. <laughs> And I thank you so much for the support, Duncan VR, and throwing in the typical animal noises. I gotta say, I'm greatly appreciative of that. I thank you so much once again for support and helping this channel keep them running. And Schnick Blackman and long live the Lee Spring Army, and the Lee Spring Army will never die. And with that, we are on to the next one. And also, real quick, I did go to one semester of law school, so I want to clarify one thing real quick, based on what I just said about taking care of the mugs being damaged. The purchase will be governed by what is stated on the merch store itself. So always refer to the actual description on the merch store because that is what will govern the actual transaction itself. I know that sounds very legalese, but I have to say that just to make sure we protect ourselves legally because we do have nefarious people out there that will try to get mugs and then break them and then say, I want all my money back. And that's simply not the way it can work. Uh, so check the website. All that is on there. If you have any questions, you can email us as well at the, uh, the email on the website, and we'll be happy to answer your question. Uh, but moving on to our next one here, we have one from SEKSK who puts in a five and says, try Google Rosenbauer Simba 6x6 Austrian. And that is a cool vehicle, by the way. It's a uh, firefighting vehicle, I think. And they said also the MZKT 6922 from Belarus. And also there are possible chassis for your fire truck launcher and cheers from Norway. And thank you so much for the support from Norway. And also, here is the Panther 6x6. Wow, that is cool. That is actually really neat. I like this one in black. Oh, yeah, man, I love these Panthers, man. Rosenbauer makes a very nice fire truck. Like, I bet they're expensive as hell, too. Oh, you know they gotta be expensive, man. Looking like this, this thing looks sci-fi. You know it's expensive. Uh, but still, thank you for sharing that. And that may be a possible chassis. I feel like it's an older one, less modern than this, but certainly of the air, uh, airport firefighting truck design, 100%. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that well. Thank you so much once again for support. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to CK Bold, who puts in the five and says, take a live chat question. And we shall, CK, and thank you very much for that support. And we are going to this live chat, which goes to Quantum Fighter, who says, do you think all the captured and institutionalized Ukrainian children are lost forever? I don't think they're lost forever, but they're certainly spread out throughout Russia, and hopefully they can be returned back to Ukraine by the end of the war or just a little after the war. But I hope all of them return safely, but I don't think they're lost. Uh, hopefully they're just uh, out there in Russia somewhere. And so with that, thank you so much once again for the, uh, for the support. I hope that does address that well. C uh, well, I hope that does address the live chat well. And thank you, CK Bull, for sponsoring that live chat. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Carrie Ann LSA, who puts in a five and does not leave a comment. But thank you, Carrie Ann, very much for that support as always, and we appreciate it very much. And we also have a five from uh, <laughs> Jack something from LSA, and I know who this is, by the way. This is the friendly person that always changes their username to be something very interesting all the time. They said the crater looked like a dong. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, uh, I think you were sharing that. <laughs> I think that was the show I keep running. And with that, we're on to the next one. And the next one goes to Wilness LSA Latvia, who puts in a 20 uh, euro donation. And thank you very much, Wilness, for your support. He says, sexy mug. Sexy. Great. Love it. Babuba. Make hot dogs hey. great again. And the hot dogs are not getting great again. They're getting worse. Uh, and question from Enforcer to Enforcer Matt. Those hot dogs are getting moldy, Wilderness. <laughs> Those hot dogs are getting moldy. Especially you're sitting out like that for five days with nothing going on. Moldy, moldy, moldy. Mm, goodness. Uh, but beyond that, thank you so much once again for loving the mugs. Uh, once again, it's officialenforcerstore.com, all lowercase, no spaces. Uh, and you'll be able to make your way to the website and get yourself a mug. Uh, but I'm glad that you like it. And Matthew, what question do you have for me? Uh... Are you tired? Man, I'm exhausted. <laughs> like, I'm about to well, fall out. 
I'm telling you what. And so with that, I hope that does address <laughs> that well. And thank you so much, uh, Wilness LSA Latvia, for supporting that question from uh, from the Enforcer 2. Enfor well, actually, that was the wrong way around. I was supposed to ask you a question. Matthew, are you tired? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you're supposed to round it out, man. You're one that answered the question. <laughs> like, that's, that's, you're supposed to go, oh, damn. all right. And with I, that, mean, like... I, I can take care of it if you want. And with that, I hope I've addressed that fairly well. And once again, thank you very much for that support and always supporting our work. And with that, we are moving on to our next one, Perfect. which goes to Seb SK. He puts in a five and says, did you know uh, hot dogs are just poor leftover meat stuffed into the pig uh, some Pig intestines. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, yes, and I thank you so much for the support and helping this channel keep running. And you're absolutely right. That's what hot dogs are. But hot dogs, I'm not going to lie, aren't that bad. Uh, but Hot Dog Man is terrible. Uh, watch out. <laughs> Don't get near those grease traps. Uh, but still, <laughs> with that, thank you so much for the support. I hope that does address that the best I can. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Ed, who puts in a five and says, Enforcer Matt, hey LSA, it's Irish Ed here. And I've hey. always said, never, ever, never, ever, ever trust a Russian. And I'm about 20 minutes behind the stream tonight. And hey, it's okay, Irish Ed. Some people are like an hour behind sometimes. But still, I thank you so much for the support and helping this channel to keep on running. And also, um, I would say that Russians are uh, never to be trusted. Never, 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 never. Uh, but still, thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And we are on to the next one. All right, and our next one goes to Ethan, uh, the Japanese-American Sylveon, who puts in a two and says, when will Russia gonna give up on the war? Uh, I have a feeling by the end of this year, with how things are going right now, they'll probably be in a position where they can no longer uh, carry out the war. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that well. Thank you so much once again, and we are on to the next one. The next one goes to Bruce Lee, who puts in a two, uh, and thank you very much, Bruce, for that support. And we also have a two from Ryan S. And huge shout out to both of you very much for that support, and we appreciate it both very much. And with that, that is our last Super Chats of the moment. So we are now moving on to our live chat questions, and we have exactly three of them. So our first one tonight is going to go to Ted Mitchell, who says, Do you think that Turkey should be removed from NATO? No, 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 don't do it. Wait, wait, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> don't do it. Turkey is a very vital member to the NATO alliance. I'm like, I know that they do Turkey things, and they're really goofy with that. But we can't kick them out. Like they, 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 and also we can't kick anyone out of NATO too. It's just not in the. It's not in the writing. Um, they have to kick themselves out. Uh, so I would say, no, we should not kick NATO, We should not kick Turkey out of NATO. It'd be a bad idea strategically. Uh, but with that, I hope that does address that well. And uh, with that, we are on to the next super chat. And we have another one from Ryan S. who puts in a five and says, "I live in Mid Mo. Um, I think it's Missouri. I think." Uh, and they said, we have a pretty hefty Ukrainian population. And if I can find a way to get a flag sent over there, how do you guys want me to let you know? Uh, and I thank you so much for the support, Ryan S. And, uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, we got a couple of them that are still on the way over there at the moment. Uh, so, some that will make it through without us trying, uh, without someone trying to hustle us for several thousand dollars for airline tickets. Uh, and, uh, you know... Oh, oh my lord, that was that was so annoying. That was, that was man, I'm I'm not gonna lie, that actually made my blood boil. That like that whole thing. Oh, trust me, it made mine boil too. But I've I've kind of like smoothed over. Like I used to go berserk when like something like that would happen. But now I'm just kind of like, eh, well, you know, I should have known better as well because you know I should know that most people are out to scam. So you know, it's it's uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Oh, but it pissed me off though. Because the way it went about, like, it was, like, literally the way it, they approached it after we were like, yeah, if you can get the flag over there, uh, we would love to see it. Make sure to send some pictures, and we'll show them on stream. Okay, thanks. Hey, um, by the way, I don't know if y'all realize, but airplane tickets are a little expensive. Like, that's literally the way they approached it. Uh, and I was like, wait, what the hell do you mean they're a little expensive? You were supposed to have known that before you even said you'd bring one over there. I mean, that's kind of a, like, you, they didn't say, I'll send it to Ukraine. Airline not included. Like they said, I'll bring it to Ukraine. That was it. And it's like, huh? 
It's like that that's something right there. Um <laughs> that, that was really something. Um blood pressure rises when when that happens. But beyond that, uh I wouldn't worry about. It. There are still many others that are making it on their way over there. And if some of them can't make it over there, it's fine. I mean, it's there's no pressure to get them over there in reality. We just love to see one on Ukrainian soil. Uh but if if they all don't make it over there, that's that's fine too. Uh but with that, thank you so much once again for support. I hope that does address that well. And with that, we are on to the second to last question of the night. And this one is actually a super chat. It goes to Blue Flam Triple Seven LSA, who puts in a ten. And thank you, Blue Flam. He says, "I have words to say, but weren't mm. well, but uh, eat dots." Question to the chat. And thank you for the support, Blue Flam and um, bots eat dots. Uh, I like that. <laughs> but still, let's get a question to the chat, and that's actually going to be the final question of the night. And so, who was the lucky last person to throw in the lucky last question of the night? And that viewer is Pell Smith, who says, Have you and the Enforcer heard about the famous stock exchange building that caught fire in Denmark called Borson? And you think Russia could have done anything uh, to do with that? And I did hear about that. I saw the video of it, and I hated to see that because I had never actually seen the building. But anytime any historical building like that has existed for a long time, burns down or gets like uh, messed up like that, that really, like, pains me like to see that because it had a lot of history behind it after I looked into it and it looked like it got pretty badly burned from what I could tell but very sad to see I'm not sure if Russia had anything to do with it though that would be it that'd be a close one but enforcer what say you I'm doubting I'm doubting the Russians had anything to do with that directly uh it could have been something else uh we do know that there's a good amount of arson that has been happening in recent years on historical sites across Europe uh it doesn't have anything to do with like national actors trying to destroy heritage sites it sometimes is just crazy people doing it uh because that's the way they try and get back at the world or something is destroying beauty and history and culture uh which i don't get i just find that to be despicable uh one of the worst crimes you can do is to conduct a crime against a national identity or a national culture uh but i didn't really hear about that much uh but it is terrible to hear i honestly have to say that the fires that have been occurring all across europe have been uh, terrible i think the one of the worst ones that has happened recently was the fire that uh burned uh through the roofs of notre dame um that was a terrible one uh ended up causing a massive amount of damage to notre dame uh and they're still rebuilding notre dame to this day there was also another major uh cathedral in france i believe it was one at amiens um which would be terrible if that happened up here uh then ended up catching on fire as well and that was actually uh, that was actually confirmed to be arson and they did arrest the person who did it uh let me see if i can find that cathedral here we go actually it looks like it might still be fine um hmm is it let's see when was this taken may of 2022 yeah, it's fine then. I, I don't know what cathedral it was that burned down then, because the cathedral at Amiens actually is beautiful. That's it right there. It looks a lot like Notre Dame. In fact, I believe this one is larger than the one than, uh, at Notre Dame. Um, but still, it's their cathedrals are beautiful. Any buildings that were made uh, in, in older times are always beautiful for their charm and the kind of history and culture that they had around them at the time. And I hate to hear that the, uh, the one in Denmark did burn down, but I'm not really sure if that was Russian state-sanctioned uh, cultural genocide or some kind of an attempt at that. Um, and so with that, I hope that does address that the best I can. And with that, we have reached the end of tonight's stream. Um, I got to thank everyone so much once again for watching this stream tonight and really enjoying it. Uh, it's it's an, It was an incredible thing to be able to share all of this news with each and every one of y'all. Uh, although tonight's stream was actually a little bit smaller than our normal Ukraine war streams. Honestly, it felt a little bit more homey because... We didn't have like this massive football stadium sized crowd that was watching the show. It was actually our normal um, crowd of folks and we're always happy to have you all on and it's wonderful to see all the same faces here as we continue to cover the war day by day. Uh, of course, if nothing major happens tomorrow in the Middle East, uh, because I will tell you all this, we're not going to be doing double streams again any day. Uh, it will be one stream or the other. So if there's massive breaking news that happens in the Middle East, we are going to be covering that news and we're going to be forgoing Ukraine war news that day and then just covering that news and the next day's news all in the next day's stream. So we'll cover the Middle East and then the next day after that we'll cover the past 48 hours of the war in Ukraine. Uh, or if there is massive news in Ukraine and there's something going on in the Middle East, we'll prior prioritize Ukraine and we may make like a short war video or something like that on what's going on in the Middle East. But nevertheless, we will be making sure to keep you all apprised of everything that's going on in the Middle East and in Ukraine and around the world as best we can. And I uh, hope that we've been um, keeping up the mark on that as best we can lately. Of course, 
I will see you all tomorrow at 10 p.m. Eastern Time to cover the next 24 hours of the news of the war in Ukraine and possibly the ongoing war inside the Middle East. Good night, good luck, take care, stay safe, Slavo Ukraini, and long live the Least Spring Army. The Least Spring Army will never die. And good night, folks, and thank you all for another great two streams tonight. Two streams, two streams, two streams. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow at 10 p.m. Eastern on tomorrow's nightly war news stream. And, of course, go check out those mugs at officialenforcerstore.com whenever you get the chance, because they won't be there for too long, maybe about a week or so, or however long the enforcer wants to leave them on there. I can't recall. Until right Saturday. Bat. But with the Till Saturday. There we go. Uh, so with that, Slava Ukraine. Here I'm Slava, and good night. We'll see you all tomorrow. And that's uh, that's ne next yes uh, Saturday, by the way. That's not tomorrow Saturday. That's the next Saturday. But with that, good night <laughs> and take care, everyone. The <laughs> long live the East Spring Army. Good night. Mm -hmm. This.